Hello. Hi. Are we are we live? Oh. Oh. Here we are. We're here. I got so much space. Good evening. Yeah, we're all in like uh, almost reasonable aspect ratio. Instead of like the the freaking on the rise overlay was like <laughs> vertical <laughs> postcard. It was like iPhone cameras aspect ratio, which we should have done. That would have been cool. Because iPhones are cool. Um, cool. So welcome everyone to episode 13 of The Last Page. Our D and D and D and D and D five E and D and E and E and E and E campaign. Um, the E's stand for the syllables that um, One. really excitable people make when they get excited. That's what they're for. I'll offer no reaction to that. To make this as comfortable as possible for you. Okay, what we got? Great. So, uh, welcome. Um... Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you, nerdy, drunken monkey goblin for the follow. Um, Great name. Really, really nails home our dynamic for tonight, which is awesome. Welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, especially thank you for the follow. Hello, viewers, whoop, whoop, new whoop. and old, tall and small, uh, sane not and medium not height. sane and Holly. <laughs> Oh, cool. So, um, Holly is taking a bit of a respite from the campaign uh, for the time being, which is why you'll notice the new overlay and all the dice rolls beneath me. Um, I don't know if I like this setup um, yet, uh, but uh, we're going to have it. Um, so, welcome, players. You'll also notice that below Timor's uh, window there, um, freshly updated over the last fresh... 20 minutes when I wondered about it and no, then now here a, we are it was I, can, I can attest ago. to this, she told me when I got home she changed you, it I you, did uh, do it. it was you're not a good annoying. witness, you live with the uh, accused <laughs> yeah. Yeah, are you claiming with... I am not objective? <laughs> are... I'm, I'm claiming that you are blackmailed alright uh, cool, so um, we fixed that so don't go losing any characters tomorrow um because that's clearly your fault um, <laughs> here and let's see if we can have an episode where no one dies um i i Holly even... worked hard last time holly so. did she she put in some work <laughs> you put in some work girl i i've never seen her be more optimal with her turns than yeah. she was while trying to be killed hair dryer the kitty all right <laughs> uh cool so, um, thank you to Roll20.net for having us part of their Spotlight program. Also, thank you to Kevin McLeod for his royalty-free music. Uh, we'll supply the tracks that we played with at the end of that. Check us out on Twitter, YouTube, uh, Facebook, MySpace, and uh, what's that one that all the kids like these days? Um, Grinder. Uh, we have a Grinder yep, profile that's what all now. the kids are using. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cool. So I think that covers everything. Welcome, and let's get right down into it, wasting no more time than the normal amount I have. Turning on the music. Oh, this is quite peaceful. This might be too peaceful. Yeah, I don't know. This is, this is, this is shit. Um, Can't talk make... about our good friend Kevin McLeod like that. Your Kevin, make some better. God, why don't you anticipate the need by having me click the right one of your <laughs> infinite amount of moods you've created through soundscapes that are both beautiful and tragic. Um, speaking of beautiful and tragic, let's just find a new track here. Um, I would like a keyword from somebody to get us a new Kevin MacLeod track. Ready, go. Pensive. Pensive? I was going to say Reptilian. <laughs> Pensive does I mean... not yield any results. Well, reptilian. Reptilian. Rep. 
We should let chat do this. Reptilian. Well, they can. They're they're current. Reptilian also does not. Kevin. Kevin, you're missing some shit out, dog. Kevin. It's disappointing, Kevin buddy. Kevin also does not. <laughs> How about Genie? Genie. Negative. Literally any term that describes anything about music. I, I would have thought pensive was one, but um Sneaky. Sneaky, I bet that's Sneaky one. music. Sneaky music. Oh there is a there's a trap I think I already oh. played this one. There is definitely there so we have sneaky, sneaky adventure, sneaky snitch. Sneaky snitch. That's what Anon asked for, so Sneaky yeah. Anon of course got the correct <coughs> guess here that led us to actual progress. I feel like Reptilian should have yielded something. Um, it's funny because that was almost the theme of tonight's episode. Alright. <laughs> this is total improvisation. None of us have heard this track before. And we are going to somehow just do the introduction over the top of it uh, and the recap. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Not right. <laughs> it's so good. All right. This is very Holly music too, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> so, last time, the last pitch, we were sent out to intercept, in a bit of a heist, uh, a group of cats, uh, tabaxi, to be uh, more precise. Uh, do you guys recall what the, the name of their guild was? Oh, flights heard, of heard of louder. Flights of fortune. Flight flight of fortune. Flight of fortune. Yes, a treasure hunting guild of Tabaxi, but on their way back from a big score, a score that left you wanting more. Um, they were carrying uh, perhaps some goods from uh, left over from your employer, Shavia, which lives north of Colonel Bend, which is the town where all of this began. Um, so you intercepted them on the road heading south, uh, whilst crossing a bridge over the Whispering Rill River, which leads towards Crenel Bend. Uh, upon initiating your, uh, wonderful plan to... Attempting a wonder... Things digressed, um, conversations were had, uh, and, uh, though quite reasonable eventually uh things came down to combat uh you were able to yoink some um items from the cart carrying all the magical items what did you get is it useful we'll answer tonight but before uh that we have to deal with the recapitulation of the aftermath of this since no one was getting away unscathed as the kitties lost their favorite toys uh Carts were uh, thrown off uh, of the bridge only to float down a river. Some of the cats got wet, didn't like it. Some of the cats got dry, didn't like it either. Uh, one of them, <laughs> a completely cantankerous ranger cat in the back with the bow, um, fired a couple shots across the bow and then a couple of shots into the bow. And like Ooh. everyone's favorite uh, container ship stuck in the Suez Canal, uh, Fortunately, Holly's character uh, ran aground several times and um, met a, uh, a very uh, untimely end uh, during the end of the skirmish. Uh, so we leave off with uh, the wagon uh, from the Flight of Fortune um, drifting downriver. Um, the horses attached to it were saved, thankfully. Um, and the other wagons uh, that managed to survive uh, galloped off down the road, presumably also heading towards Crenel. But you, on the other hand, <laughs> have returned. Uh, My audio warp, hold on. Yeah. Uh, have returned uh, to the scene of the crime to uh, collect uh, Groost, uh, other party member. It is dusk. Uh, with you, uh, you have the body of Katan, several unidentified magical items. Uh, your quest, uh, surprisingly, despite everything that happened, was successful in that you did procure the one item that you were told to get at any cost, 
and boy did we spend costs but um here we are and so it was uh <laughs> it was good um uh... holly would like us to loot her character's corpse well, yeah she, the, we, i hear a ghost speaking out to us from beyond <laughs> So, um, we will... You know, even if they, she didn't want that, you would definitely take her loot from her room. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what looting a corpse means, guys. Oh. Yeah. All right. So, uh, dusk uh, has fallen um, upon the Whispering Rill uh, River. Oh. You're maybe about... Uh, probably a little less than a half an hour from walk from um, Amber Lake, which is where your base of operations is uh, under the uh, care and jurisdiction of Shavia, um, your employer. What would you like to do? Um, so we have found Groost. Groost, uh, not difficult to find in his hiding spot. Okay. Groose rolled an excellent stealth roll. Thank you very much. Um, which has since deteriorated. Which has since deteriorated. <laughs> As Katara's feet are poking out of the bush. What state do we find you in? Groose is hugging Alabama. Katar. And Alabama. All of Alabama? Sweet home. Groose must have very long arms. My favorite is when I say something like that and Beth just stares at me. <laughs> it's just profound disappointment. Yeah, yeah. Um, we gotta make sure this stops happening, huh? It does seem to be becoming a little bit of a concerning habit. Uh, what do you mean? It's, it's fine! Nothing! <laughs> It's chill. It's very safe to be around us. No, if she I can think... be revived, I can help. Can you wake her up, Alias? Ugh, don't mispronounce things. Um, let's see. Malaya. I will happily uh, cast my last first level cure spell to verify. Uh, as my uh, medicine skill is all based on, uh, I'm good at wisdom. But, um, I'm not trained, so I'm gonna go, go ahead and spend that spell. I'll just click the slot without expending the spell because I know the answer. But uh, mechanically, I absolutely would would be inclined to try to save her if I could. And Katara hops back up. Uh, to us. Perfect. Holly, get on Zoom. Get on Zoom. <laughs> You're right. Holly, sorry to pull you back into it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, Katar is what we call in the business dead dead. If you say it twice, it's true. <laughs> How it works Beetle juice. Wild. Beetle, uh, oh. um. Well. I don't know how, lo how well you met no her, but she is beyond my help to revive. I, I haven't known her that long, but it doesn't mean it doesn't sting. She was my best friend, other than Eloise. There was a hole in my heart that one of you will be doomed to fail. I will return to you soon with my decision. <laughs> Eloise is also like this. <laughs> also, I, I meant to mention Zahara. Uh, because you ran that way, and Qatar was this way, I had to make a choice, and I did come to your aid, but I must say, only barely, you are swift. Please do not run away from the healer next time when I he's desperately trying to help you. I appreciate your uh, your help. I was very lucky to have caught up to, to you when I did. Had he not knocked you over and just waited a moment and knocked you over after, that would have been it. 
please run toward or past the healer. That's great. It's just is, a, it's a no, general is, rule. Is this the point where we ask her for a raise? Ask whom? She's dead. Oh, no, Shavia. The person who's employing we, us. It just seems like it's... We should probably ask... Hazard pay. <laughs> We yeah. should probably ask her to tell us everything and show us what's in the room. Because, you know, losing the first guy was, you know, pretty bad. Then the second guy Wait, was, what? you know, also pretty bad. Um, but I feel like losing, you know, three of us dead for some old woman that, you know, won't even show us what's in the room she won't let us in, you know? If she wants to die for whatever's in there, it's for her to do. Well, if you fear that she's hiding something untoward, I can attempt an augury to see if the course of action of asking her about it or even returning this book to her is... Um, well, let's see how the guides weigh in about that course of action, if you so... Can I ask that we maybe try to find a more hidden spot just in case people return to the... I mean, we're right next to a major road and a bridge and... Come in, come into the bush. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> we look for someplace a little more secluded. I, I dare say if the tabaxi uh, make it to town first, and it looks like they will. Um, we will likely be, for lack of a better term, wanted by the authorities for this highway robbery and such. Did any of them die? Where's the dwarf? No, they're fine. I also don't think that Colonel Bend is particularly invested in the term authorities. I think that we should be more concerned about the cats coming back and trying to to murder us. Oh, I see. That, and we're next to a, a, ro a, a road. Like, you know, like... It's as you say, Olive. I, it is prudent to to remove ourselves from this... From this scene of the crime. All right. So, action, uh, action, we tuck away <laughs> somewhere a little I, bit. I will do my best to hold, uh, or, or uh, I should say, carry Qatar's remains. Uh, and you do, uh, the un now unlit lantern um, is right on the side of the bridge where it was placed down after we being playfully uh, <laughs> Bruce uh, would take it. Yeah. Alright. Um, so now you have all of Katara's belongings. Um, and so are you just going to like go in the woods somewhere? Should we just go to no, because here's the thing. I want to look at what we got, and I want to talk a little bit about it briefly, and then go in. Okay. So, we'll because we've got out. some things I'd like to identify, and just briefly. So, in the woods, kind of not totally at her house, but maybe just like closer okay. in that direction. Easy enough to uh, tuck yourself off the road. There, um, the woods in this area are not um, difficult to traverse, but they are um, increasingly thick, and so you can find some reasonable uh, secrecy uh, in and amongst them if you head, um, you know, a good 10, 15 minutes off the road. Yeah, that's at least a half a mile, even just at, an, at a leisurely pace. So that'd yeah. be perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is this area does have several sort of large, sort of boulder-like rocks in and amongst trees and all of that. So you can kind of uh, set up with a little bit of shelter. Um, it is sort of clear, crisp night at the moment. Uh, sort of half waning moon above you. Um, um I would like to. If you're going to be doing something, Malayath, simultaneously, I would like to look at the document case. Uh, yes, I will, but I want to let you do your thing first. Just oh, okay. in case oh, that sure, changes sure. My, my question 
right? Mm-hmm. All right. So um, the sort of leather cylinder um, has a, a cap on it. Um, the top of the cap itself is uh, wooden inlaid with um, looks like uh, some kind of uh, shell, perhaps. It's got that sort of little bit of iridescent um, tinge to it. Uh, not extravagant, but definitely nicer than just sort of a leather um, document carrying case. Uh, and opening it up, uh, there is one uh, large uh, piece of parchment inside <coughs> that uh, looks to be a fairly well-drawn map. Uh, you recognize fairly quickly that it is a map of an area which you have kind of now seen in map form several times. Um, however, this particular uh, map, as you uh, look down at it, um, looks one drawn by uh, the hand of somebody uh, who is good at this sort of thing, right? It's a very nice looking map. Um, and two, uh, you can see that the same temple location um, is mapped or is marked on uh, the center of the map. Um, and drawn out in a little bit more um, detail, you can see that there's a sort of a front kind of columned facade uh, and a little bit of a, not like a goes completely around it moat, but a little bit of sort of a, a watery trench in front of it and a walkway that leads there. Um, but the map can also tell that there it's a little bit more jungly um, in around uh, that area. Uh, and the aspect of it that catches your eyes uh, the most is that um, looking like it was drawn over this map after the map was created um, in a sort of deep blackish purple ink uh, there is uh, an an arcane sigil uh, that uh, basically covers the whole uh, map itself and at the different points of this uh, this symbol um, there's five of them to be uh, exact there are um, marks. Uh, the marks, um, it's hard to tell what they were originally, but they were sort of something that was drawn in. But the ink itself from them has bled into the parchment. And even as you sit there watching it, like the whole thing had been dipped in water or something, all of them are running from their locations. The ink is just ever slowly creeping its way in this kind of curving serpentine pattern back towards the center. In the moments that we have before it becomes entirely illegible, can I try to sketch them? Uh, the the marks themselves are just smears of ink, right? Now. Okay, they're just they're gone oh. already. Yes, and they, I mean it's moving very slowly, but it is moving enough that you can see. Is this the picture? Is this a map of Crenel Bend, uh, or is this a map the, of like er, area? You know, probably about five or so miles away, and the the total oh, okay. span of the map is probably about you know twenty miles or so. Um, right. So it show it shows like parts of the Whispering River as it heads off to the north. Um, Does it show oh, Tangerine Lake or whatever it's called? Uh, Amber Lake is not on there. Mm -hmm. um, glad I um, picked up. While she's <laughs> while she's drawing it, I'm trying to memorize as much of it as I can. Right. While can, she's doing this, and the, we... the ink bleeding through it is not affecting the other things. It's, it's almost as if whatever it is is just sliding over the surface of it. So it's not like destroying everything in the path that it's blending. It's a venom venom symbiote. I get it. Yeah. And I can I at least figure out because you said that there were five five points. Mm -hmm. Can I mark? Can I like use like actual like regular ink to mark where those points were on the map? Yeah, the, the sigil that's traced over the top of all of this, just sort of like kind of geometric shape, is still there. And the tips of all of the, the points of that are, it looks like where these smears of ink have started. So Oh, okay. So that stayed. It was just, it it's was just, just the ink of the sigils. Whatever was drawn there has gone. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I thought it was like the a, I w thought it was this entire thing that was. If drawn. there was an X marks the spot that was drawn there, that X has smeared and turned into like a streak of, of ink. Mm. What is the what is the size of the streak? Is it a dot moving along? Is it like oh look something's coming or it's so it's um, not it might be an active map for all we know right? It like was some sort of GPS. Um, 
it's moving very slowly and it looks more like if you if you have like a bug land on a piece of paper and you smash the bug and then you kind of drag it out like the way its entrails just sort of leave a little bit of residue that's kind of the feel it has and you said it was it was approximately detailing an area of five miles from us uh more or less yeah i mean you guys are in like is there a way to jump up on top of a boulder and get view of that area if there's a large cloud of something smearing across the land that would be interesting mm. or whatever uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, head to either climb a tree or hop up on a boulder. I mean, it is nighttime no, here. I'm not climbing a tree. I'm going to boulder. That's fine. All right. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll me a perception check. It's going to be a fairly high DC because it's nighttime and the boulder is not quite as high as I'm most I'm not good trees. at rolling a perception, so we'll give it a shot anyway, though. According to that, it's zero. Wait, no, 26. Huh. Not good at rolling perception. Oh, um, why is it that weird purple again? Yeah. So, um, uh, you, you, Get do the manage, fix. you do manage to kind of orient yourself uh, with the map, and you think uh, sort of based on uh, the position of uh, the West Star. In my world, there's just a West Star. It's not a North Star. Um, oh, wait, no, I've been holding my map of the world wrong the whole time. Um, <laughs> uh, you orient yourself uh, and look out, and while you can't there's no sort of obvious big something there you kind of do start to see um in the the vegetation itself there's a slight kind of darkening um of certain areas and at first you think maybe it's like cloud cover passing over the moon but like the darkening and decay of uh sort of the color um does appear like it's slowly moving out um in, an, uh, in one area you can see you certainly like can't see the full breadth of the map but the closest spot to you that you think you could see you do see this yes olive yeah come take a look at this uh i am very much at a loss of what it might be okay i hand the map over to sahara um and <laughs> Uh, then I go over and I look at this, um, you know, this change, you know, with Malaya. I would like to um, investigate it. Damn. Or, or nature, okay. whichever one. Refreshing didn't help. Um, oh, you were just doing that to test. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, either I one of I pointed those. out to her. Oh, yeah, so yeah. If, so you I might mean, need you her do, own role, but you do you do see it. Um, <coughs> if somebody's seen something, they can eventually kind of like you know point it out. Uh, yeah. To the point where you can see it for sure. Um, I just I think I want to look at it deeper to see if there's anything I can discern from it. Do this uh, with your hands. Would it actually would it would it's it detect very magic? It's very difficult. This is like probably three quarters of a mile to a mile away from you. You are slightly oh, elevated sorry. looking out. So it's not, you're not like, oh, this branch is weird. You're like, what is that over there? Gotcha. The All right. So I, I will get up and look at it to see. Um, I have, well, it's kind of death, but I have dark vision, so I might be able to see it a, well, a little better, but I'm going to look at what he's, he's yeah. uh, pointing and it's, out. It's, it looks as it looks as though like a the shadow from a cloud is passing over something, but there are no clouds. Um, oh. It's kind of a good way a good way to describe it. And so it looks like whatever whatever effect this is is just actually like darkening and changing the color of um, the terrain itself. We might want to consider looking at this <coughs> light, or we could look at it now. But I think. We've got well i mean we could funnel the ink liquid off of this or it, it, i mean maybe it's dumb to presume that the liquid on the map is having an effect but also this is not how liquid works on maps how okay. does a liquid work on a map well usually it just kind of fucks up the map that looks pretty fucked up to me no, it's fine. Look at it. 
like under it. <laughs> no, not that under it. <laughs> Okay. Like, like the it's not it's not ruining the ink of the map, even though it's wet. Did you touch the ink? No, I don't know what it is. It's not acting like normal ink. Oh, Chris, okay. I don't want to Chris, touch it. Chris touches it. <laughs> oh, okay. It just feels like paper, Dean. Parchment. It's not wet. Paper. Oh. Wait, so is there not something moving along the top of it like a liquid? There's something moving through the paper as if the ink itself that has, you know, soaked in oh. and dried is shifting. Um, but okay. it's, not I've like pour, it's not poured on there. It's more like I've an misunderstood. An animation versus have that. you, yeah. okay. have you seen um, the movie or read the series about a young boy called Harry Potter? <laughs> yes, I'm familiar. Uh, I believe he has a map <laughs> in which the ink shifts. Um... So this is a bad analogy. Yeah. <laughs> what do we think if we roll it up again, put it in the tube, and take it out again? What, like hitting F five on it? I don't know. I mean, okay. So look away, look back. Is this still the same? <laughs> we unplug it and plug it back in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's restart my map. Do you, do you feel like? Oh, hang on. Did you say it was pooling anywhere? Like it was going towards a center piece? All of the, the five points on the outside, though not like direct lines, it does all look like they are sort of slowly kind of making serpentine uh, paths heading in towards that central point. And that central point is the temple? Correct. Okay. Uh, Zahar, do you think you roughly got the where the five points were? Yeah, those ones didn't move. I would, the, the voice in my head that tells me what I'm seeing got confused. Okay, all right. <laughs> you know how you just experience the world by the voice in your head telling you about it? No. <laughs> Thanks, voice <laughs> in my head. <laughs> so, I guess, do we, um, hmm. Is this something we give to Shavia, or do we look into it on our own? Or do we give it to her and then just look at the temple on our own? Well, I think the first thing we do is we say, Hey, Shavia, we got your book, but, you know, our friends keep dying. That's not okay, Shavia. It's not so okay. you have to show us what's in the womb, or, you know... You can't have the book back. I think she's going to take it back no matter what. Okay. Well, then I'm going to hit her in the face. Really hard. Thoughts? Anyone? I think I'm just going to give her the book. I could auger that very course of action. Hit her in the face? Or give me the book? Well, either I suppose I could ask the gods. I feel that... Uh, one may insult the gods for why are they asking this question, but um, but I can try. If the gods didn't want us to call them up with every question possible, they shouldn't have given us their phone number. I don't even know what you're saying anymore. <laughs> First makes a good argument. What's a phone? It's like a magical a gods talking point. It's like message, but big. Big. Oh, I usually just call people one way. <laughs> anyway, okay. I think that I think that's wise. That's 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 something. That's some information. Okay. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm oh, close Ooh. my character sheet. Uh, open up my character sheet. There we go. And I'm going to click the following spell. This is my last spell slot. Oh, I hate this purple BS. All right. I have a familiar with Augury, so thank God I don't have to read this. <laughs> oh. I'll be able to fix this in a, in a short minute. I just need to, to uninstall and reinstall some. One to two words a line, though, is really readable. Yeah. Anyway, the specific action and course of action is 
uh, that I play, we plan to take within the next 30 minutes. So we are within 30 minutes of, of, of Chalia's, correct? Yeah. We're very mm -hmm. close. You said you did have close or something. So uh, would it be in our best interest to uh, surrender this book of unknown arcane ability and knowledge to the individual known as Chalia? And what is your augury ritual? What kind of form does it take? Well, let's see. By casting inlaid sticks, rolling dragon bones, or yeah. So, uh, in in clear uh, giant kin fashion, I arrange a whole bunch of rocks and I smash them with other rocks and I pick through the the rubble of the rocks and go, hmm, oh yeah. And I'm like, well, this clearly means. All right. Um, so uh, smashing through. Uh, the first uh, rock you smash actually has a geode inside it, which uh, sparkles and glimmers, uh, which is clearly a sign of uh, wheel. However, mm. the second rock you smash into um, seems... Nope, I stopped there! <laughs> seems, ...seems crumbled um, and shit, almost sort of, you know, ashen and just dirt and is very much a sign of woe. So the reading you get back is wheel and woe. Well, as you can all plainly see, even though I don't need to say it out loud, the portents have been cast and the answer is clear. There is both benefit and detriment in handing that book to Shavia at this point. Of course, if we were to delay this reading, this reading means very little. So do we want to act upon this? knowing that it is both beneficial and, uh, and detrimental, or not? Well, if it's beneficial and detrimental to give it to her, then it's beneficial and detrimental not to give it to her, right? Well, that is actually a bit of an extended... There may be zero benefits to not giving it to her and still have but, the same detriment or a different detriment. But, but there may be. It doesn't clear. So there's so. a chance. <laughs> But we didn't ask, do we not give it right. to her? Right, we, we don't, have, we don't have the knowledge. You can't just suppose. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, can't you, like... I'm sorry, your normal, your normal backup's not here. Okay. That's me. That's me, Twy. What about that, Sahara? What were you saying? Uh, I was just wondering whether the more magically inclined amongst us could maybe take a look at this book and clean, magic-y wow. information. Oh, wait. Well, we look at Groost. Well. All, wait, all the, all the verse was it? Yes. Y yes. You, you read book? Um, weren't we specifically told not to read the book? Do you always do what you're told to do? What if I told you to read the book? Would you do it then? <laughs> well... So you don't always do what you get told to do. <laughs> so you should read the book. <laughs> Let me look at my notes real quick. Intercept and see if I have. Spell book at any cost. Get it. Intercept and see if I have. Oh, I feel like I would have written that down. I don't remember that. Well? Can I um, use a history check to see if I remember that she said that? Sure. Just to, just to see if I can recall the conversation. I actually this day discussed this use of using history. Um, 16. Uh, you recall, I'm not sure why I vividly recall this, but now you will vividly recall this, um, that when the issue of the spell book was brought up, Groost inquired if you could have access to it to take things from it. And Shavia's response was that would be incredibly dangerous to you um, to try to harness powers that were beyond your ability. I do remember that. So I think that's why I, I remember it as being like, I shouldn't read the book. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't look into it. Um, I mean, you do, you do know that there's a difference between, like, looking at it and like, oh, this spell on page Oh, like taking like, a spell yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look inside the book then. And Ghost help? Ghost could cradle the book, say nice things to you. I say to the book. <laughs> oh, you're a fine book. You have such pretty. You know, here's the thing. Fine you, such you, subtle you, leather. 
listen, we, we make fun of talking nicely to our books, but it's really a good thing to do to them because the more you treat them well, the better they will treat you. Chris, like, maintains a smile that turns his head towards Zara. <laughs> and then just shakes it. <laughs> Zara is just... <laughs> and I just kind of, like, mutter under my breath. I go, Kasima, do not listen to them. Anyway, I open the book. Right. And I would like to take a look at the contents. So the book itself is quite heavy. Um, so Groose, uh, very quickly, you're like... Um, there. Uh, it's oh, about... Still! It's, it's about four inches thick. Um, and the the cover itself is a sort of deep purple to green gradient um, sort of, of dried leather uh, has sort of metal banded uh, on the corners is a little bit of uh, durability uh, there and then on the center of the cover there is this wrought metal skull decoration and then from it uh, extending also also in metal as part of this decoration is uh, five roses um, and each of them kind of grow out uh, from it and then uh, each of the five uh, the sort of head of the rose is at a different stage of uh, sort of either blossoming or decaying that goes sort of around in a circle as you can kind of um, there uh, so opening it up uh, the first thing that you notice is that um, it doesn't strike you as this isn't a wizard's spell book the way that you would understand it. It's not a nice, neat, orderly, organized uh, sort of manifest of um, practices of arcanum. Um, what you leaf through is pages upon pages of handwritten letters, um, like letters between two people. Um, however, looking um, at the letters as you sort of go through and kind of like take the time to um, not attune to it but sort of it's like if you step into a dark room at first you can't see anything and then slowly your eyes adjust and you start seeing patterns and sigils that are sort of written throughout the the prose of these letters that are the actual spells and rituals themselves and how to do them and it's just all woven through um, this uh, correspondence um, in it. And uh, also, so you kind of just like leaf through and uh, it's very much the same um, throughout. This is, strikes you, uh, the first thing that comes to your mind is this is an incredibly inefficient way to record spells, which is why the book is so fucking large. Um, but it also would have taken somebody a tremendous amount of time and there's some maybe some other purpose to doing it this way um and in the letters uh which are all written in common um you do see uh the phrase um the sort of person the letters are addressed to um is uh often uh my budding blossom and then uh the name uh Karel is also um in here many times are there two different types of two different people's handwritings? They're all this. Everything in this book seems to be the same handwriting. What does the relationship between these two people's letters? Because it's two people's letters, correct? Or is it letters to one person? It's a whole bunch of letters to this uh, one person. It seems. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're um, just not seeing the response back, correct. right? Like, okay. So first, first question: How do you spell Carrero? Uh, second question, is it that it's addressed to my budding blossom and it's signed Corail, or is but my budding blossom and Corail being used interchangeably? Uh, they seem to be used uh, interchangeably uh, and there is no um, there doesn't appear to be like a from so and so written on it. Um, okay. Do I um, oh okay. So what is the uh, like affection towards this this um budding blossom is it does it feel like like caring like as in familial does it feel romantic does it feel like what is this kind of like what kind of affection am i getting from the, from these these letters give me an insight roll please olive's in tune with her feelings mm, maybe not so much she got a 10. <laughs> all right um He's moderately into their feelings. Yeah. The, the letters themselves are um, 
definitely familiar. These aren't sort of like formal business letters. Um, and vary from sort of casual to uh, romantic. And that's kind of all you're, you're able to glean from it. Um, okay. So that <laughs> Olive thinks, like, was reading this and thinking about this and is very intrigued that, of the idea of a, a book that could be paired with this that is the response back. Like, that's kind of like what's churning through her head is that, like, I wonder if, like, these are in a pair, just, you know, like, the res responses back to that. Um, and in reading this and uh, after, like, thinking all these things, I, I'm like, there's this is very intimate. There's no way we can't return it. Why does that preclude? Why does one thing preclude the other? I, if I feel like part of me had been lost, right? Shavia, our employer, who you met very briefly, I'm very sorry, um, has lost you know, a year of her memories and, you know, and this book is very important to her. So therefore, you know, I feel like we should give it back, but it's important for more than just knowledge and power. It feels like there's some importance of a relationship of memories in here that goes beyond just the magic and power. I only ask because the woe part of the augury almost implies that while it might be the correct thing to do, it also may ignite uh, repercussions that may not be correct. Uh, people in a highly uh, emotionally charged state tend to do extreme things that could maybe cause them regret later. And that given to something as powerful as whom we're supposedly working for may result in the suffering of others. And that is what I am most concerned about. Let's, I'm, I'm simply bringing it up. I am not actually saying that we shouldn't. I'm, I'm just, caution is how I try to live my life, so. Also, I, leaving through, all, through yeah. all of this, um, tucked into the back cover, there are two loose um, sort of pieces of parchment. If found. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I pull out the two loose pieces of parchment. Uh, they are both Read them. spell scrolls. Um, well, maybe I can ask her for these. Do they, um, if I was to look at them, or I want to look at them, um, what spells do they look like? Um, Making our I'm going to have you make an arcana check for each one. Um, they okay. seem like fairly advanced magic. Okay. Um, but they are, they're like, you recognize these. These are like, if you want to, if you go to like a wizard and say, I need a spell scroll of this, this is what a wizard would give you. Okay. Uh, 15 and 14. All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. That will be enough uh, to go through here. Let me just find, just make sure I get them exactly right. Um, <clears throat> I copied and pasted, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, the two, th the two spell scrolls are the spell modify memory and the spell time stop. <laughs> oh no can i borrow time stop <laughs> <laughs> um this is the plot to an artemis spell book it's just tucked in the back of a book <laughs> uh we're rich beyond our wildest dreams let's go now <laughs> do you think anyone used these on uh on dean who dean Oh, Auntie, she's she's the the like caretaker and and chef. She's great. 
Oh, she's an okay cook. But, um... No, oh, she's probably very good. I should, I should be nicer. Doesn't she kind of seem like there's stuff missing for her? It does seem a little bit blank. I, I thought the blank memories was... Uh, Ch 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 Xavier or Xavier? Like, yeah, now you've got it. Yeah. Dr. Khan, gotcha. <laughs> I mean, it's possible for it to happen more than once. If someone had access to this spell, then it would, you know. So. I mean, I still think we should just be straightforward with her and say we want to look in the room. Uh, Olive. Yes. Are you able to tell if those were loosely packed in the back of the book because they hadn't been disturbed in a while? Or were they just placed back and were extra loose because the uh, cat folk are well aware that this is the score of the century and will be coming with the rest of their entire guild to kill us now? Oh, that's a good point. So, yeah, do they look like they were... Like you know, like when something's in, like in the back of a book, and you and you take it out, and it has like a little bit of a stick to it because it's been there for a long time. Does it have that, or does it? I mean, they do come like they haven't been like anciently decayed into this. Um, it doesn't look like they were like they were placed in there very sort of like meticulously, kind of tucked in, sort of like this little overlapping leather the part where the leather sort of comes around uh, and makes gotcha. almost like a little pocket so it looks like they were put in there deliberately by somebody and unless somebody like leafed through the whole book and opened kind of the back cover probably wouldn't uh see or notice them um you know that uh it's not uncommon practice to kind of like you know stick this kind of stuff in spell books um and it's usually done it's, for it's kind of stuff you know and it's usually done um, for two reasons that you can think of. Um, one, this is going to get copied in at some point. Yeah. Uh, or two, um, <laughs> I don't really have a need to copy this into my spell book, but I have a need to use this. And since my spell book is like how I cast spells, they go in there, and then when I need to cast them, uh, right. they're there. Okay. Um. Yeah, these these would break me right now if I tried. Um, so I um, stick them back in. I close the book with care. Um, uh, Bruce, did you grab anything from there? I got a I got a big glass of water. Oh. Cruz holds up the vase. Um, looking at it, uh, it actually isn't filled with water. It appears like it is filled with uh, a very thick, viscous smoke. It is capped though. That the smoke is, is it over of... water. Is the smoke over water? Uh, no, the smoke is not on the water. <laughs> um. Fire I was, in the sky? Maybe I can find maybe. out what it is. Yeah. Can, can Groost spend time with his glass of smoke water? Uh, he can indeed. Time is fair. So I have chosen my new best friend. <laughs> um, it is uh, a magical item. You, uh, it's a little perplexing to you as it seems like it's two things as in if something something was repurposed to do something else that it wasn't supposed to do um so uh you get the sense that uh this um the original use of this item um was uh as a and i moved my notes around so that'd be easier to find but i keep looking in the old place for them um uh an, an ever sp smoking bottle uh, basically a bottle that you can open and can create uh, masses of smoke. However, um, you also... Oh, it's a uh, pretty much. Um, you also kind of 
get the sense uh, the more you're with it that this is also being used as a vessel to entrap something and that mm. there's something else like <clears throat> seemingly sentient and moving around inside it within the tar <laughs> oh there's something in there's something inside yes that's the smoke no something more a new best friend, perhaps? I'm going to open it. it oh. All right. We're not enough for you. No, no one offered any kind of opinion. <laughs> so <laughs> Bruce, would, Bruce would go. We were just beginning to offer opinions, but it's too late. <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> But if you if Bruce moves too fast for us, then that's the same as not offering any opinion. I can't say no if they don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't stop me. <laughs> we were trying. So, uh, you uh, the the stopper to this uh sort of uh bottle. It's all very ornate, sort of curved glass that comes up into sort of a fluted neck and then um, comes out a little bit at the top and it has this sort of uh, stopper that comes to a point and in it uh, is corked at the bottom. So you kind of, takes a little bit because the cork is sort of dried out um, and you uh, are able to pop it uh, free. And then from it, uh, the smoke just sort of starts billowing up um, and over like a... Uh, elementary school science fair volcano um and you uh sort of uh see it as it just sort of flows down to the ground like you've opened a fog machine or something like that very quickly starting to to fill the area up with this uh very sort of pale bluish gray smoke um and then there is this uh looks like almost sort of a spark of bluish energy that you can feel sort of start bouncing around in the bottle as you do it and it's impacting the sides of the bottle with enough force that you're kind of like this as it goes and then um eventually its trajectory uh, hits it so it just goes and flies out um of uh, of the bottle like a launched firework and then um in a minor explosion of uh of the same colored clouds uh there's this big sort of mass of clouds that expands up above you uh maybe 10 feet or so and it just starts swirling around uh and from it uh you begin to see a, a torso of a creature forming and then arms and a head but no sort of like lower torso um and uh eventually um looking slightly disoriented you see um large Bill large size yeah, a large sized creature um uh, skin is kind of this pale bluish ashen gray color um looking down at you uh ears pierced with many many rings um, wearing sort of uh, a, a silken uh, robe almost uh, that comes down and just sort of crosses uh, in, in an X of two uh, spans of fabric that sort of just come over her shoulders and down. Um, and her arms uh, come out from her. Um, however, where, where there are hands, only sort of uh, this smoke billows out from uh, where her wrist is. So there are no like hands. Um, but the smoke does kind of move, um, and she just sort of looks around well over all of your heads, because she's about 10 feet above you, and, and the torso itself is probably, you know, six to eight feet tall, so you're guessing if this was a creature, they'd be kind of in the, you know, maybe 16, 20 foot tall range. Um, and just Hello. looks out around you, and then as you speak, um, looks down at you quite quiz quizzically looks around I'm ghost where's guitar <laughs> <clears throat> why were you in the glass who are all of you ghost she sort of like looks around she here Shavia? No. She your friend? 
not in the least. Okay. Um, why not? Was indebted to her bonded for a time, but that time passed, and yet somehow my servitude continued to be indentured. She said she apologized, but needed a backup plan. She has a lot of backup plans. I think we're her backup backup plan. Add um, a few more backups to that, I think, probably. My name is Olafia, the Unequaled. It's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm grossed. Duh. Small. Still trying to... Yes. Among other things. Lucky. Chris the plucky. Maybe. Also, maybe also not. among also among other things. Mm. Um. I was not bound to this vessel by servitude to an oath. I thank you for my freedom, but I owe you nothing. Okay, that's fine. Could we be friends though? You know of Shavia. Do not trust you. Okay. I don't trust me either. I do a lot of bad <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, at least we're self aware. But if we don't, if we both don't trust me, then you can trust that you don't trust me, so you can trust me. You know what I'll do? I'll be untrustworthy. Which makes me predictable. Predictability is good to have around. I I kneel down next to Groose. Roll and I say, I say, I say, buddy, I don't mean to undermine your point, but you're the least predictable person I've ever met. <laughs> I never where... have any god's damned idea what you're gonna do next. Um, where will you go? I will turn home. And find a new vessel. Oh, well, oh. It just so happens. <laughs> yeah, do you want a lantern? Wait, what? <laughs> Recently, <laughs> came Recently into the vacated. What happened to its previous occupant? It was my friend Katara. She died. The vessel with it. No. We, we were never allowed in. She would go in there, but we wouldn't. We never went in there. I would no sooner reside in a crypt. <clears throat> okay. That's fair enough. So. What. Do you know what Shavi is trying to do? I know only of the service that I filled. What did you fill? Her wish. She found what was her wish? A request to create a, a person, blank vessel. Oh. She seemed that... uninterested in the drawbacks of this and confident that she could fix any of the flaws or um, uncertainties it might cause herself. Um, does, does she look like, and Groose describes the cook person, uh, whose name I can't Undine. remember. Undine. Obershin. I do not know. All that was given oh. was the power. As, okay. as the key ingredient to a recipe, perhaps, I provided, she added the seasoning and spices to get the final result. That's a cook. I, I know this metaphor cook. exactly. Um, so... I warned her the vessel may not result in a soul-born creature. She seemed to not heed it, confident that whatever her additions to this wish would be sufficient. <clears throat> and... 
after fulfilling this, my oath to her for finding me. She imprisoned me back in that cramped, smoke-filled cell. Well, I'm sorry for what she did, but we freed you. I'm grateful. So, yeah. Don't hold it against me. I'm just gross. This, a blank vessel. Is it to put someone else's soul inside it? To make that person live again? Make that soul live inside? I can no sooner speculate what one would fill an empty jar with. Yeah, what it is. Yeah. Is it for water, for wine, flowers to grow, your collection of tiny rocks. No, you would. Do not know. Oh. But, glass I was asked to provide, and so I did. What are you? I am Jin Kind. Oh. I am a goblin. Did we? So, anybody have any more questions? No. Okay. No. No. Well, we don't want to keep you. You probably want to get home and do whatever it is that you like to do. Um, you don't trust us? Fair enough. I don't trust us. Um, but you know, we're here if you need friends or need some help. Provided the help doesn't get one of us killed. Again. I am appreciative. For my freedom. But I will return home unless you have any other questions I could do with that priest for you. I mean, what do you think is important? <laughs> Sorry. What do you think is important for us to know? Um, yeah, you know what? I was going to ask that. <laughs> because why oh. not? I am oh, at, at a lack for anything right now. As a. As a, like, addition to that question, if you wanted, you know, people to avoid the same betrayal as you received, what advice would you give to them? Don't be complacent that those you entreat with aren't one step ahead of you. Okay. Don't. Hmm. It takes a special kind of hubris to attempt things that are well beyond your reach. And it takes a beautiful form of madness to achieve them. do it without both. Okay. Can I can I keep the glass? The magical trinket is yours. It okay. should billow smoke from it at your command. But there are no more gin in there. That's don't, good. Don't huff that smoke. Would uh, 
if anyone asks later on down the road, would you say like a group of tabaxi opened the jar and let you free? And not us? Are you asking me to lie about my freers? No. At least I'm not. No, Maybe. She is. I think she's worried about Shavia knowing that we set you free and being like, wow, I can't believe these guys betrayed me. I'm going to kill them. But, you know. I'd no sooner relay my mind to Shavia than return to that vessel. That's fair. I was just thinking in the future, like you're telling stories around the dinner table to people and be like, oh, we haven't seen you in so long. And, you know, and then, you know, oh, who set you free? And, and then word gets around. It's okay. You could, you, you know what? It's your life now again. You, you do what you want to do. Was Shavia the only one that had questions for you? Did she have companions that also had requirements and, and requests? Was she alone in her imprisonment of you? Was there another one named uh, Kara L? Uh, uh, <clears throat> Karel? Karel? Karelian? When I entreated with Shavia, she was alone. I know not of others. Her blood makes you nothing. Okay. Well, it was nice to meet you. Goodbye, friend. Thank you. Bruce the Plucky. And with that, there is a tremendously strong gust of wind, um, one which uh, catches you off guard, um, probably strong enough to knock you off your feet, um, and the smoke dissipates, and with it, uh, as if she were just smoke herself, uh, so too does Salafia go. Um, the branches around you sort of whoosh, and then kind of snap back as the uh, clearing that you're in. Uh, settles back into the quiet of the night uh, from before you opened the bottle. Sahara. Yes. You've ruined everything. I could have been known amongst the jinn as Groost the Doombringer. Groost the champion of 14 axes. <laughs> but now I'm Groost the Plucky. <laughs> to be fair, I was the one who said the word Plucky. <laughs> oh, Olive, you've doomed me. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. Is it is it like totally is it like better to be like, oh, here comes Bruce the Plucky. They won't hurt me. And then you're like, shiv, 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 you know, like we've uh, we've given you since now you've involved me in this by not seeing the difference between us. <laughs> what I we've have, given you here. I have poor short term memory problems. <laughs> <laughs> what we've given you here is an opportunity of surprise. Great. In great shame. <laughs> <laughs> it's clean. It's only like modern shame. Oh, so, um, you know, I feel like I don't like ever being in this position because of past experiences I won't get into. But I don't think I trust the person who we thus far put all of our trust into. I feel that our extra exploits in bottles and releasing genies from bottles, etc., has pushed the portents of my god's favor past the time it would allow us to glean. We do no longer know if it is weal or woe to return this book to Shavia. Or, or, have you guys seen, by the way, what Holly wrote for Sh Shavia's name? Shavavia? <laughs> and um, it's up a bit, but it's there. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> If we return that now, there might be a different outcome, especially based on the fact that a major uh, power was just loosed upon the world or released. Or Shavia may inquire about her bottle. 
Well, I'll just tell her that I opened it. And, you know, show her that maybe if she wants things not to happen, she should share more information to us about the things. Yes, well... To be fair, I don't think she knows she had a bottle. One thing is for sure, That's I want to go in the room. Actually. We could just return the bottle itself and not say anything about it. We're just going to put this back on the shelf. But, but <laughs> my, my friend said that I could keep it. Well, Shavi has said we can keep some things. Is there anything else that we have um, uh, acquired that we need Stored. to attend to first? That's all we, we've grabbed. Then we'll just go to Shavia and see what the repercussions might be or not. I fear her more if we don't return the book than if we do. All right, then lead the way, you three. Oh my Come god, on. we get to show you your room! What? It's, it it's belongs. <laughs> you get to choose now if you want an inside room or yeah. an outside room. Yeah. yeah. Outside, outside room's just room. called outside. <laughs> no, there's like a ones room without windows. Faces the outside. All ones with windows. Sometimes right. if you get the ones with windows, things try to eat you through them. It's true. All right, okay. yes, yes, you're all scaring me. So, you... so let's you get used to it. Pick up Qatar and bring her back. Uh, you make your way. Um... We're not donating her body to this lady, are we? No, just the lake. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it her custom to be fish food? <laughs> Lowlanders. All right. <laughs> so make uh, it our way. Make your way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, back to Amber Lake, uh, Shavia's estate, um, the entangled sort of wrought uh, metal gates um, still, you know, swayed slightly open uh, as you left them, uh, winding down the path to the main door. Um, and as you get halfway down the path, um, you hear sort of twig snap um, in the underbrush, maybe about 20 uh, feet or so back. I throw um, the body. <laughs> uh, back sort of just like off, off of the drive path a little bit. Um, Who's that? Behind you. Who's that? I hear you. Just wake me. Come over there. Come out. I have nothing in the way of higher level magic left. <clears throat> I get my do, sword I, ready. do I see anything in the underbrush? Uh, make a perception check. Can I, can I make one too? Yes. Excellent. Perception. Yes, me. Yes, me. 18. 19. Oh, hey, my music. Oh, well, look um, at you. So <laughs> I uh, am looking at me. <laughs> not particularly difficult to find. Uh, you do see um, a human man uh, sort of uh, standing there, uh, very much sort of like. <laughs> um. And then, like, he looks at you, he kind of makes eye contact with both of you, and then, like, looks away for a second, and then looks back up and makes eye contact with you again, and then he's just like, I, well, you know, figured you gotta, you gotta practice each, each and every time. You would I can, a little I less can, uh, perception-y, I could, uh, sneak right up on you. I, would you like me to give you some stealth pointers while I'm giving you some pointers on how not to throw your sword? No, I, I... I think what, uh, this is really a landscaping issue. Um, right. Live and learn, right? Uh, I don't no, see this you training. Male. Next time, don't step on sticks. It's my professional, uh, pro my professional well, advice. Also, if you step on sticks the entire time, then nobody will know that there's any difference. Great, so less Chris, sticks or not... more sticks? Yeah. Chris, that's not how that seems, uh, seems like sage advice. Uh, well, welcome back. Um... <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm yeah. still, like, all armored up and ready to fight. Who is this person? It's oh. fine. Meet the state, state security. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, Malayath. 
Uh, there is a open room. Oh, there's there's actually two open rooms. Why? Who died? Pata died. You shook Wait. my hand as I held the body. Oh. <laughs> I mean, could be sleeping. It is nighttime. She's not sleeping. Try not to assume anything about anyone. Security is about keeping an open mind. Very, very progressive of you. <laughs> so. Uh, what? Is funny happen? <laughs> Security is about keeping an open mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just struck me really funny. Continue on. Apparently, I'm the only one with a sense of humor. No, no, Dora was dying too for a second. So, uh, I just didn't get it. I, I can uh, help you with the uh, the body, if you like. Or yeah. just take it if you're, uh, you know. Uh, I'd look back toward the party. I really don't know the the social dynamic here, so I'm like, neither do we. I think. Shavia should see her. Yeah. She's not too squeamish around the dead, so that uh, will probably be okay. Yeah. Um, doesn't appear to be a security threat, so uh, we can just. Uh... Head on. Lead the... Yeah. No, I'm going to stay out here and be quiet for a little longer. I think I got some kinks to work out. Like reaches down and starts picking up some of the sticks and he sort of like stuffs them in his pockets. <laughs> as, as we keep walking, I'm like, <laughs> I think I whispered to Sahara and I'm like, are we sure he's not the empty vessel? <laughs> uh, Let's go. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you make your way, uh, back into uh, Chavez's estates, into that uh, central area, um, large sort of open room with that courtyard uh, with glass walls around it in the center, the teleportation circle, uh, the various um, braziers and sconces on the wall are all uh, lit, uh, warm candlelight and firelight closed through the entire uh, estate. There is some smell of um, not freshly cooked, but sort of a lingering uh, scent of uh, dinner uh, upon the air. Um, some seasoned meats, perhaps. Um, but otherwise, all is quiet. Um, I look to see if... Uh, what time is it? Say? Evening. Evening, okay. Like past a dinner hour, right? Yeah, probably not like super late, but you guys did sort of head off into the woods and do some rituals and all of that. So Oh sure. Like, does. Does. Probably like eight <laughs> eight o'clock or something. <laughs> okay. Um I don't know if there's like a uh is was Shavi's quarters kind of like close to like this area? Uh, hers were in the top right of that map. I don't okay. know if you can... Um, I don't know what state she's... this map is in, but... Yeah, would you say she's probably like 60 feet or less away? Uh... Like if we walk from that sort of main entrance, 80, 80 feet-ish. Alright, so I'm gonna here. walk till I'm 60 feet Did you range. load in or not? Did I move you? No, I did move you. This map hasn't loaded in. Oh, look who's there! There's a corpse on the floor! <laughs> There's two corpses on the floor. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, you know who's not on this map? Malaya. Yeah, I had view because I used to be that corpse, you know. This is the wrong one. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to walk down the hallway to. I am around 60 feet. What if I can just do this? I can. Hi. Um, use my telepathy to tell her that um, we've returned. And can they reply to that? No, right? They cannot, no. Oh. It is, um... I don't know if I can go back, but it 
it's a 60 feet away. Okay. Um, yep, easy enough. Um, and as you sort of all enter, sort of coming from um, hallway past, uh, Ondine um, sort of uh, heads out. Anything that any of you need? Dinner is uh, still out, should you need to eat. I did not know when we were coming back. We didn't either, but we probably would want to eat at some point. On Dane, do you yes, have a soul? Excuse me? Do you have a soul? I don't understand. You know, like, a soul. Do you have one? I mean, how truly, would you, do any how of would you, us have so how would, you, how would you know if you did or didn't have a soul? I don't know. I think it's only relevant if you're dead. No, hmm. no, that's not true. I have no. another question. You have to cultivate your soul through life to see what the result will be when you die. Do you remember being a child? I remember earlier in my life. How earlier? I came here to work for Shalia. But before then? I was young then. What was your mother's name? I don't know. It was an orphan. She mm. told me I never knew my parents. When, when did you start working here? When I was young. How young? Okay. How does she look during this conversation? Make an insight She's still check. kind of blank. Okay, yeah. To see how she looks. Right. Well, she looks like, like on Dean. Like, yeah, but like, does she? Is she look like she's you getting upset, or is it like kind of like you. she's programmed? So therefore, like, you know, therefore she just keeps you know Her. same thing. Yeah. <laughs> She in a 60s robot <laughs> monotone. <laughs> Intruder alert. <clears throat> uh, 15. Alright. Um, she definitely looks a bit confused at the questions. Um, not upset or kind of like disturbed. Just <laughs> as if somebody like came up and asked you, like, hey, what's your first childhood memory? Like, and you can't quite, like, just instantly grab it out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, you can be a friend, Dean. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you passed. <laughs> <laughs> it was a test. Um, and then you hear you hear the uh, the front doors uh, kind of uh, close loudly um, footfalls coming down uh, hallway back behind you and Caspian sort of climbs the stairs <laughs> into the who's asking her existential stuff <laughs> um, and she kind of looks past you looks past you all of and um, smiles a little bit uh, Caspian hmm? welcome back was your training successful yeah I um I mean, I picked up all of these uh, from the yard, so I think we're making progress. Uh, might be good kindling for you, I thought. Um, you know, for the for the hearth. Do you want? Should I just 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 put them on the table? And she sort of like cocks her head a little bit. Yes, yes, that'll be fine, Caspian. Thank you. Great. Well. Uh, Next time you start a fire, think of me. He sort of walks uh, back and just goes. <laughs> you hear a clang of a pot. Uh, and then uh, 
30 seconds later, Caspian comes back out and starts like dusting off his hands. Well, none of you need me. I'm uh, off to bed. You know where to find me. Um, in bed. Yeah. Uh, sorry about your friend again. Thanks. What? Don't worry about it. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Olive sees some slight foot marks on the ground and starts to try to kick him around. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's probably very clean. On uh, he probably did a good job. She did terrible. It's just weird. <laughs> all right. So what are you all up to? Um, I am calling for Shavia to let her know that we've returned. Uh, doesn't seem to be a response. Did Shavia uh, just come down the stairs? That was Caspian. Caspian came oh, up, yeah. up the yeah. stairs. When you come in the main entrance, you have to go up a little flight of oh. stairs to get into the. Sorry, my area. apparently my my grasp of spatial uh, arrangements this session is a little bit loose. Yeah. Stairs go up and down. It's fine. Um. Well. I mean, we could. Are you calling telepathically or like how? Telepathically, yeah. Groose is calling out loud. <laughs> yeah, Groose can do that. Um. Oh, yeah. Undine sort of uh, heads back to the kitchen, and then after a minute or two of you guys calling out, uh, she kind of sticks her head back out. Um. She had several bottles tonight, so my guess is that your calling will not rouse her. Javier! What well, do we do with the body, by the way? It's just going to hang out here in the foyer? <laughs> <laughs> we could take her out to the lake if we wanted, or we could, you know, figure out a way to bury her. Burn, burn her, put her ashes in the wind. We could yeah, collect. I, don't, I don't know what she would <clears throat> If I know anything about lowlanders, you're gonna probably drown her. I heard that recently. That's what you do with your dead, right? What? Ow. You say you're gonna throw her in the lake. Seems like you want to do that right now. Oh, it's like kind of like a thing where they like float out to the lake and become. I don't Fish. actually. Yeah. You could do that. The many creatures of a lake will enjoy that. And I, I just mean, grimace. In the Feywild, we usually just sort of leave them out for mushrooms. What? The mushrooms eat them. Well, you just, you take The really big ones, if you don't kill the, all their children. To the fungi. <laughs> the fungi fields, and you just kind of. It's a total party out there. What the? The Is cave sound. You guys feed your, your dead people to fish. I don't see why the mushroom fields are that much stranger. What? I don't feed my dead to fish. It's a goblin. They feed, what they we, just uh, let's, feed. let's go. Let's take care of her. We put them out as sacrifices to the great god Magluviat. This not, is not better. Show I'm me not... to this lake. We will put the body out. Okay. You construct a raft at least, or do you just want me to... I think it, I think it just happens. A little bit right? of a... A little well, bit of a it's, it is put. very important that you don't touch the water. The or you will also throw. become oh. a fish. What? I, I said what I said. Yes, could you explain as that makes no sense? I've. Well, those, you see, the water wants you to be fishes, so if you touch the water, then there's a good chance you're going to become a fish. Yes, what guardian guards the lake that I have to be wary of? I don't know. It the lake just wants you to be fish. So it's a, it's a large water elemental is what you're telling me. We are having this conversation as we're walking out to the lake. It <laughs> uh, doesn't take very long to uh, get there. And you do see uh, the lake, which is the namesake for uh, here, a glowing uh, sort of golden yellowish amber. Um, kind of like a oversized koi pond. Uh, the fish inside it are all- It's just one koi waiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are uh, quite a few fish in it all of them sort of golden um, in color has sort of the uh, you know tiger striped or spotted patterns on them um, 
Those fish used to be people. You know, you're not a wizard. Why should I trust your words? If I watched it happen. Okay, well, again, should I just unceremoniously, <laughs> or what's the... Say some, you know, nice words, either out loud or in our heart. We can at least... Nothing? Sahara, you... I don't... I can't remember if I saw it. Sahara definitely did. I definitely did. I don't. I think I. I think Qatar was the one who was with me. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, so how do, the next to die. Groost, I don't know how true it was, but you said it was your best friend. How would you like me to proceed? Okay. Um, I feel like the lake isn't really like the play. Um, but we're committed. <laughs> <laughs> but we're committed now. I mean, so, we're not. We didn't put her in the lake yet. She's not a fish. We are at the lake, though. So. Um, we cannot be at the lake. It's okay. possible for us to go other places with our feet. Okay. So, I think if I was Qatar, which, you know, very clearly I'm not. I am a goblin. Um, we should bury a really big hole and fill it with some of our favorite things. And what you do is you leave her in the hole, and you continue to fill it with things until there is no more space, and then you cover it with a thin layer of dirt. Okay, this can take so, upwards of multiple years. Um, so, what you're saying is we should leave her to get eaten by the local wildlife? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so how is this better than the fish again? Because fish are gross. Bruce, if you want a hole to put things in, just make a hole and put things in it. You don't need to bury <laughs> someone as an excuse. <laughs> Lots of holes to I put things. So, what would you all like called to do caves. to resolve this? I'm tall, not very strong. I don't have much chuck left. Okay. I feel like this is taking too long. Um, put her in the lake. I'll lift her up, go to the edge of the waters, and do my best to throw her in the lake with my 12 strength. All right. Uh, as you sort of uh, <laughs> kind of you know go from holding to uh, throwing an offering, um, body becomes lighter and lighter, and then just sort of glows across it in this same amber light and then sort of uh, converges down and then that, that energy swirls and sort of tumbles um, gradually elongating and then there's a little splash into the lake and you see a new fish has um, emerged. Well, that was both beautiful and puzzling. I should have augured this. My god. <laughs> could have just fed uh nature or we could have fed some demon tricking everything i it's hard to say that's not natural i go stomping back to the room i just i i told you that she tunnel. would become fish i don't see how i could have been more clear <laughs> you didn't engage the truth of it though all i heard was nonsense words that's on you you didn't you didn't really get a hold of me and let me believe anything. Okay, you next time I'll grab your face a, between oh, my hands by and I the way, say, this is the body yep, yeah. becomes fish. Look, your mannerisms implied that you were just unreliable. Listen, <laughs> when you work security, you've got to keep an open mind. Can we go, go get something to eat and go to bed? Ghost <laughs> will go for his period of morning. Ghost will see you in the morning. Why is this bed. bed made for a gnome? God, short shit. Yeah. <laughs> I actually do think I would like to just like stop in the kitchen, make a plate, and go back to my room. That kind of like, just like, today was a very long day. Um, uh, if any nobody minds, I would like to take the book with me. 
Um, but you had it anyway. What? I, I yeah, I know, anyway. but I'm just... Um, and I want to spend some time, you know, just reading the book some more. Um, I also, like, out on the desk, um, I put uh, Cosima, my book, next to it. And as I'm, you know, reading the book, as I'm flipping pages with one hand, um, I have, you know, uh, some in my quill. And I'm just kind of like on scraps of paper, not necessarily like in Cosima, but like uh, taking just like some random notes. Um, c like my book is kind of full of these random scraps of paper, like just kind of thinking about like, I'm, you know, just anything I can learn, not copying spells per se, but like kind of trying to puzzle this out a little bit. As you do this, uh, you just hear, it's not right. I'm not copying it word for word. Well, he, it's not right, that one there. None of these are right. This isn't how you do it. I know. I didn't go to a school. I gotta figure out how to. No, you can make do things stronger. right. That's not right. Ain't no way that should be working. But I gotta figure it out. Right. I don't think you want to figure this one out. I mean, I'm curious too. But don't go start writing any letters in me. That's a little bit too weird. No, I can just talk to you. I don't need to write letters. You save that shit for the mail. Right, Olive? Abs what about bottles? Can I put stuff in bottles? I don't want to go in a bottle. You're never going to go in a bottle. You would never fit. Nothing could handle the magnificence of you. It's true. Um, but all this, there's something else that holds all this together. It ain't just the binding. Can't you smell it? Lean in. It no, you like can't smell it because you're not you're not a magical book. That's why I've got you around. Right, I can smell it. What does it smell like? It smells like something ain't right. Oh, kind of like when mom used to leave the, the meat out too long sometimes, and she'd be like, "Oh no, it's fine," and it wasn't fine. I haven't tasted meat in so long. I'd probably eat it. Oh. I, you know what? Someday I'll cook you a meal. Don't get my pages dirty. Well, no. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll make you a feast of words. Maybe like a metaphorical meal, if you will. No, I, I said no to the letters. Uh, okay. More spells, though. Yeah, that one was really exciting, the last the, one. The book's like, and it flips through. Look at all these broke, uh, blank pages. I know. We'll get you some more. We'll get us some more. The book nods. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like a little, like, I think like little of, yeah. of pages, like, okay. Well, I close, uh, I close the other book and I'm like, okay, we're going to leave it to rest for now. I respect you too much to treat you like that. Good. I mean, you're going to sort all this out, right? Absolutely. It'd be a mighty boon to you if you could, you know, tap into some of that. I know, there was two really big ones in the back. Like, just like... <sighs> but I I don't want to hurt us yet. I mean, ever. I don't ever want to hurt us, ever. That's, that's a good attitude. Yeah. We'll get there, though. Someday we'll be ready for it. Well, considering the last spell I put in you was sleep, maybe I should do that. Like, for real, not like a spell-wise. The book nods. Okay. Um, and I tuck myself in bed, and I tuck Cosima right next to me like I normally do. Um, and um, I leave... 
I think I put the other book underneath the mattress for now. Okay. At my feet, because I know it's going to be really lumpy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do not get along with us. Yeah. All right, anyone else? Any evenings? Bruce would talk to Eloise, who cannot talk back, but Bruce likes to think Eloise listens anyway. And then Bruce would sleep. Sleeping, long rest, sleep, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna eat in the like the kitchen that's right next to our rooms, and keep working through my old notes, just in terms of like trans. She's just like catching up on archive backlog, um, and then we'll go to sleep as well. All right, long rest is achieved. Yes. to re-prepare spells gain back half your expended or half the total number of your character level's hit dice restore your hit points to maximum replenish any class resources you may have expended and take a five minute break oh best short rest wow long rest don't don't say short rest <laughs> is so, it the rest of us will take a we rest um, five minutes. We'll be back for the thrilling last half of this episode. <laughs> Thank you for watching the penultimate half of this episode. We'll be we'll be right back in five minutes.
And we're back for the thrilling, exciting, and no way soporific conclusion of this episode. A uh, long rest has been achieved, and for you at home, the immersion is complete as your we rest completes as well. So, uh, those of you at home, uh, feel free to <laughs> replenish your class resources, and uh, let's get right on to watching. I hope uh, one of them was stamina. Um, so, morning is upon you. Breakfast uh, is wafting its sweet scents through the air. What? would all of you like to do? As Shavia busts out of his... As Shavia, as Groose busts out of his room, Shavia has been spending <laughs> the just... night. <laughs> um, Awkward. Groose starts uh, shouting, Shavia! Where are you? It's morning. We have stopped. Ondine kind Shavia. of... Uh... <laughs> Walk, walks past the hall. Please don't shout in the house. And just keeps on walking. Um... <laughs> shut up. I'm just di uh, just digging into breakfast. I think. All right. Um, Maybe see if she comes down. Shortly, uh, shortly after um, you guys uh, have gotten your breakfasts and, and, and stuff, Shavia um, does appear. Um, looks a little bit worse for the wear her hair is kind of just like you know all pushed over to one side but looks uh, a bit unkempt um and she sort of unceremoniously uh sits down uh reaches over to the center of the table and uh, uh plucks up a pear and just sort of bites into it try something with some grease it might help <laughs> No, to kind of like, you know, sometimes if I'm feeling a little, I mean, I'm not making assumptions. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. Any news? I just look at, I look at Olive. Mm. Well, Qatar died. Any good news? Found your book. That's great news. Sorry about your friend. Um, you can have uh, Caspian take care of the body if you'd like. We already did that. Xavier? Um, What's in the womb? In the womb? <laughs> I mean, the, the womb. The, the womb. It's like we're it's in your womb. Like babies are made? I don't know. Do goblins lay eggs? I don't know. Why am I being attacked? No one is attacking Do goblins you. lay eggs? <laughs> um, what are you? What are you asking? <clears throat> the room that you don't let us in. What's inside? We're gonna have to be more specific. There's a lot of rooms I don't let you in. All of them. Specifically, the one you said, if you go in there, vague threat. Right. The south wing. You have no need to go in there. It's okay. Where I keep all of the things relating to my work. But what if we did have a, a reason to go in there? I can't imagine we would. But what if we did? No. Could we go in? No. Why, why don't we? Because I'm telling you, you have no reason to go in there. Okay, but we'll... I need to know. You need to know that you have no reason to go in there? We need to know what's in there. Why? Um, because we are finding out information that raises questions, Shavia. There are questions to be to be answered, um, and questions must be answered. Right. I cannot help you if we are worried that at any time you could you know, lock us away in a jar. Or other things. I mean, you're quite small, but I don't think of a jar that large. Um, I mean, I am... Am I not paying you enough? Am I not giving you enough 
amenities? Is this what this is about? Is this some sort of negotiation? Well, I would like an on suite, but Listen, no, that's not the point. Um, I, I'll increase all of your wages by um, 10 gold divided amongst the four of you. Is that right? Oh, by the way, hey, this is Matthias. We picked him up along the way. Oh. I was uh, in the background of the speech. You said, go, go, go. Get this. Right. Yes. Right. I, I believe we met, but my, ap it was, it was brief. my apologies if I can't keep up with the. You, you might want to adjust your tactics slightly. What? I'm not. <laughs> don't worry about it. I don't want to be overcritical oh. because I know everyone has their own methodology, but yours is. Um, well. We got through your book, didn't yes. we? Keep up the good work. Um, and I did say at any cost. So Shavia? That quite literally, I suppose. Shavia? Yes. Why did you trap that kind, nice person in a vase? What? You trapped a, what was it, gin in a vase. What? You trapped a gin in a vase. No, I, I heard you. I just don't understand at all what you're talking about. Okay, so those are vase. This right. one is mine now. Um, okay. And I opened it up because I felt that there was something inside and a gin came out and was like, greetings. Um, and then it said that you, Shavia, okay. trapped it in there um, after breaking the terms of your, you know, the agreement for working with it. Um, so clearly it is hard to trust you if you have a history of breaking agreements and trapping friends in vases. Oh. I certainly don't remember any of that. That doesn't make it any better. That just means that you can't certainly about the four friends that you trapped in a vase. <laughs> so you forgot about it. In her defense, she has been mind wiped. Right, but Not wiping a wine just doesn't wipe her personality, you know? Selectively sampled, I suppose. Um, I like to think of myself as resourceful. Um, you're all clearly of no threat, so I don't know why you should feel um, threatened. Oh, I know, I just feel assaulted. <laughs> um, and you got the book. Where is it? Pull it off from underneath my seat. She like sort of perks up and smiles. Okay. I was sitting on it. Oh, uh, I, I have more questions, Shavia. We're not done. Right, uh, of course. And she this is an like intro. Out for it. Interrogation. Um, wait. Do not. Do not ruin. <laughs> no, Eloise. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, go on. what Groost is, is getting at is that we're in the dark about a lot and it's leaving a lot of casualties in our wake. And if we continue to work for you, we need some more light shed on what's happening. Or this the secretness is counterproductive to the end goals and your end goals well my end goal is to illuminate all of this so apologies if the task of solving a mystery has become too mysterious for your terribly liking. mysterious <laughs> if i if i had all the answers i wouldn't have needed to hire you in the first place but would why hide things that we can't go in? Why aren't we? I mean, do you really want to uh, see that area so badly? I don't see how any of this could possibly be relevant. You know how when you're trying to solve a problem and you're so deep into it that you can't get perspective and see outside, but someone else comes by and is like, oh yeah, the answer's here? because they haven't spent so much time with it. 
Mm, no, not really. I'm usually quite good at puzzling things out myself. Well, just trust me on that. Sometimes it happens to the best of us. So maybe you're in it too deep, and we need to we need to see more. I know you won't believe me when I say this, but in some regards, the less you know is likely the better. And I don't want to expose you to too much, especially if that can't or isn't relevant and could put you in uh, greater danger, or even perhaps lead you to astray to the wrong conclusions or something. Danger about from. Things. Danger from what? Well, there's lots of things that uh, pose danger. Oh, name one. World. Um, that creature that came the other night looking for We killed me. it. Right. But it also <clears throat> killed one of you. What? Right. Because we didn't know what it was or where it came from. Right. So if we'd known what it was and where it came from, we could have been prepared. Right. And had I known it was about to attack? what it was and where it came from i would have given so, you that information okay so you're saying that we should not have information because the information will bring things or could lead to things that would get There's us killed a difference. Right? that information i didn't have to give you this information i have have evaluated it and think that it'll be more trouble than it's worth well, it's sort of a lot of trouble right now, right? Perhaps. Um, yes, did you have I have to some, add? I have some questions that are likely unrelated. All right, well. But, but no... it is fascinating nonetheless. Um, you sent us with great haste to retrieve the book, uh, knowing that it was moving somehow. How did you come to know that it was moving uh and were you monitoring the area that was scoured by these people and if so could you give us the um why that area is so important that it actually your course of action was to monitor it so i, I, I just like to know the significance i have um had uh others employed me keeping an eye on that temple um, for the purpose that uh, it was uh, the last place I have any recollection of. Oh, I see. Uh, what could I ask? Is that last recollection? Is Maybe there's a detail in there that would help us. Uh, should we go there and explore it? Is there something to be uncovered there? Should we stay away from it? Is something dangerous? Should we warn the people about it? No, 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 please don't. Please don't tell anyone in the town about this. Um, they tend to get very... Ghost like I get it. Yes, um, and the last thing we need is a mob of torches and pitchforks uh, showing up at the lake. Um, that could go poorly. Um, That's my second question. Uh, about the lake. <laughs> yes. How is it consuming the dead and creating undead fish? Uh, the fish aren't dead, um, nor <sighs> alive, but definitely not undead. Um, I'm going to turn undead up there later. I'll find out. <laughs> no. All the fish. Can ah! ah! <laughs> I'll just like jump out onto land, <laughs> turn into liches, and run away. Um, uh, the, let's just say, when you've traveled the world and experimented things such as I have, um, lines between life and death blur, uh, a bit, and you can never be too sure where exactly any creature is, alive or dead, unless you're certain of where they are. The lake allows me to be certain of where they are in death in the lake. So it does capture souls? Yes, of course. And if we shut off the power, will all of Manhattan... Uh, <clears throat> if, uh, 
Well, oh. Does that not um, interfere with some of the gods known as shepherds of the dead? Would that not come with repercussion? Oh, yes, of, uh, of course. But I mean, it's not like I'm keeping them forever, just as long as I'm sure that they're not a danger to me or the town or anything else. So you then you have a method of re... So it's a catch and release fish. Um, <laughs> it's just to to some extent, but I I've never released any of them because you know you can never really be sure. Well, that would certainly garner the attentions of things, <laughs> would it not? Um, let's just say there are probably other things that I have the attention of that are more pressing than that sort of minor infraction. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, then, uh, more about that temple. Should we try to uncover anything there? Is this a course of action you would like? Do you have something else in mind already? Seeing as you have places monitored, maybe there's another one we're unaware of that needs um... immediate action. Loss of life again. <clears throat> Um, since you all seem loyally invested in um, unfolding all of this, uh, perhaps I will take a bit of a risk and be a bit more frank with all of you. Um, I suppose I owe you that in um, returning this to me. And she just sort of like affectionately puts her hand um, on the book, slides it like a little bit closer to her over the table. <laughs> um, Well, Olive, yes. how, how have you come to uh, the place that you are at in your journey uh, through the magic realm? Um, I, it's kind of like, a, it's a little... It's not embarrassing. It just isn't traditional, I don't think. So, uh, I worked for two wizards, much like on Dean works for you, except they were very distant. And Relatives. one day, I heard a book calling out to me. Interesting. And prodded me to leave and learn more and we've been on the and she again the apron the book is like right there like you know and, and she kind of puts her hand on the book um and we've been on this journey ever since we have a connection i've always been a very good reader and always been very bookish though you know the wizards let me into their library the lower one right not the important one hmm. but um, why weren't you allowed in the important one because I, I was just the cook i didn't go to one of their academies i wasn't overly learned to them even though i was very smart and very smart I know tenses. Um, and are you resentful at all of that? Only when people make assumptions of me. I think that I'm very capable, just as them are, if not more. I think we are a lot alike. I definitely did not begin my journey into magic with any kind of schooling or pedigree. Um, in fact, I was um, quite unceremoniously barred from those sorts of things, you know. How elitist wizardry can be. But I was 
motivated, let's say, and um, found my way to other sorts of uh, avenues to power, much faster, much more thorough, more flexible, willing to uh, allow you to explore, to embrace, to learn at your own pace. I mean, wizards and their rigor tend to slow themselves down. I'm sure you agree. Um, I have never been one to pass up an opportunity to learn new things. Um, even if perhaps the cost of those things is not immediately clear, I have uh, unyielding faith in myself to be able to navigate whatever the future may bring, um, which gives me the confidence to take the risks. Um, I feel whatever's at the heart of all this mystery is perhaps either a miscalculation on my part or quite the opposite, um, something that needed to be done, but now cannot be known. Um, that temple is, in fact, the first location that I um, began this journey on. Also the last place I remember um, prior to this hole in my memory. It is a temple to the creature Ogush. Wait, did you say Groost? Or Goosh. Oh. Um, is that why the, there's five roses on the cover? Yes, indeed. It's a bit more pleasing to the eye. Um, you know, you can always temper things to your own liking, um, but the symbology is the same. Um, so, um, I guess you could say that the extent of my involvement there, uh, increased, uh, throughout my ability to, uh, learn and explore more. And, um, well, since you will, I suppose, need more information as your um, goblin companion has, perhaps it's time I gave you the full tour. But if I do so, you promise that you'll get to the bottom of this for me. <laughs> Groot <laughs> just takes it. Just... <laughs> bottom of this, yes. <laughs> Do we have a deal? Uh, Olive is very curious, so she is... All her body language and whatnot is leaning towards, yes, a deal. But is looking to her party. It's not like I have anything better to be doing. If we agree to this, but it turns out to be contrary to what we know to be correct in such a vast uh, like contrast are we still beholden to this agreement not knowing going in yes it's kind of the point but I can assure you um, after you've sorted this all out do with the information as you will but just promise that once all the pieces fall into place, you at least show me the completed puzzle. After that, you're free to act on your own conscience. Surely the act of revealing this couldn't be uh, construed as something that is uh, morally questionable, since you don't know what you're about to reveal could be good or bad. Wheel or whoa. Precisely. <laughs> Well, my god is a god of knowledge and, and life, so we will uh, grasp at this knowledge for the sake of life. My god is a god of being really tall, so I will stand on this chair. Alright. 
have no gods. Thank God some masters. Yet. Left. I'm not sure why we, we brought deities into this, but... Um, oh, Gloobius right, will welcome you into his flock, Sahara and Olive. Okay. Alright, well... No prepare to get stuff. your hands dirty. Uh, she sort of... Uh, <laughs> the nation is bloody. <laughs> she she reaches, reaches over um, to your plate, Groose, and um, picks up uh, a piece of uh, cooked meat and then um, eats it. Um, come on. walks out um slung, <laughs> slung slung out of uh, under her arm olive stands so quickly that her chair almost falls over <laughs> uh and Starts as she's follow. she's walking through the um the courtyard uh, or the the, cent the central um, foyer area there she, she yells out caspian um I I need to request can you can you please um, help on Dean in the kitchen clean up breakfast um, and make sure it takes at least fifteen minutes. Yeah, no, I uh, I'm happy to help around the house. Uh, this is good. Um, yeah, no, this will be great. We'll uh, we'll make it take as uh, long as it needs. walks past and sort of um, smiles at all of you somewhat blankly um, and uh, <laughs> heads uh, heads to the kitchen and um, uh, Shavia walks to the door at the uh, southernmost point of uh, of that courtyard sort of this uh, big eight foot wide door has a, a semicircular arch up at the top of it um, there are gems uh inlaid into the archway of the door itself that are both uh sort of that purple to green gradient and then again much like the front door there is a, a central um sort of uh carved out circle and she reaches and she uh she puts her um her hand uh on the center of it and uh sort of uh places it and then rotates it and as you hear this <laughs> uh, lock into place uh you see on what was once a smooth door, uh, sort of almost uh, the surface of it erodes into these engravings, and you can see this spiral of um, of four uh, or five rather things coming out to it, uh, spiraling out um, and then locking into place. And then there's a brief sort of uh, flash, and um, and the door sort of uh, slides back about a foot and then begins to um, slide over to the side. And uh, with that, uh, the area behind uh, is dark. There are no torches or light um, uh, back there. And um, she's sort of standing in the sort of opening that the door has, has formed, looks back um, over at all of you. And you must promise that it's all going to be approached with uh, level minds. Yes? I mean... You security is all about having an open mind, so um, absolutely. That does, of course. Um, I mean, Caspian said it, so I think it's not. He is the security expert. Uh, that poor of, empty vessel. Font of inspirational uh, knowledge. So, um, as a... the clock is right twice a day. That's true. Uh, all right. Uh, so, as you uh, step into uh, what is a Bye, oh, no. oh no, oh no, Grist. Um no dark vision. So, uh, you step into uh, a large uh, circular room. You're guessing that this room is kind of the base of. It's not a. It's not a huge like tower that goes up, but it is um, about uh, probably three or four stories that you can see. And this is visible from the outside of the house, but you're definitely like in the bottom of the tower. Um, and in it, uh, from the darkness, uh, you see there in front of you something incredibly large looming. Um, and as you uh, sort of step past the threshold of the door, you see at first one head, and then another, and then another. 
until reverse TMS. See, until you see <laughs> five heads uh, total all looming there, uh, motionless, gnarled in front of you. Um, and as your eyes uh, adjust into the, uh, um, into the dark, you see uh, that what stands in front of you is an incredibly large golden statue of what appears to be a five-headed beast that looks almost reptilian, serpent-like in nature, gnarled teeth, sculpted in impeccable detail. And uh, as you look around the rest of the room at its base, there is a tremendous pile of gold, coins, treasure chests, items, the room's filled with this. Ugh. Am I off the map again? No. Oh. <clears throat> Three-headed, five-headed creature. Yeah, it has five heads. <laughs> um, unfortunately, your uh, <clears throat> graphics only have three heads. Um, the other heads are silent heads. They're not pronounced. <clears throat> And Xavier just sort of um, pushes past all of you as you're all just sort of like looking around and kind of steps between uh, you and uh, the statue. Um, well, there you have it. Um, mind your step on the offerings. Um, <laughs> Wow. So Scrooge McDuck over here is going to take a dive. <laughs> it's yes. it, is, it, is, it is very much a, a Scrooge McDucky type uh, stash of treasure. That's um, what I was going to say. Bruce McDuck. Do you uh, pay us out of this? Um, yes, I need to. I mean, it's largely... This I'd like to a... roll religion, if I can, on the, on the statue. Uh, yes. This isn't all of it, but yes. Um, I didn't say it out loud. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Apologize for the purple font. Oh, I suck at religion. I'm taught, but I have no intelligence. So, I... Do I have two results? What happens? <laughs> you know what's really weird? On D&D &D Beyond, your role popped up for me. So bizarre. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna clear that. I believe I got a twelve, but for some reason there's yeah. an eleven. So eleven eleven and a twelve will have about the same answer, so Alright, we'll go eleven point five. How's that? Okay. That's fine. Um looking up, this is uh not um necessarily uh religion in the context that you know and appreciate of it but there is it is very common for um those who beseech favor or power from um powerful beings or entities to place offerings and such like at an altar you leave like a sacrifice or something um the extent to which it has been done here strikes you as like this is this is what you would expect if like a city, you know, put all of their offerings to the god to get favor for the city, right? right. This is not like a personal project amount of offerings. Um, and it, it is very clear that it is whatever this being is, that it has been, um, you know, edified in this uh, structure. Which, But the being is an unknown iconography of, of a god that I'm aware of. Um, god, no. It is, it is, I mean, you can all sort of tell that this creature is definitely a hydra of some sort. Right. Um, Hail Hydra. Um, okay, that's enough. Yeah. I'm just like... It seems excessive. Well, that's kind of the point. So... What? Why? How do you... Is this your patron? One of them, yes. 
can have multiple patrons? Mm, not technically, usually. They're quite possessive, but if you uh, are creative <coughs> enough, you can kind of, you know, play the angles. Do you have another room with another big statue and more? Oh, no, no, no. It was too impractical to have um, multiple patrons that had this sort of, um, you know, requirement of offerings. Um, took quite a long time to amass this fortune. Um, Did you have help doing this? Um, occasionally. Um, the more help you have, the more you have to pay. Uh, so it does dwindle the profits a bit. Um, you show this to us to what end? This is the knowledge that will aid us. Well, you were very insistent about knowing what was in here, thinking that it would help you in some way. So. Well, it raises further questions. Like, why is it in here? <laughs> I mean, this is part of um, the machine that uh, generates my power, or did. So your power comes from Ogush. Well, whatever, whatever wellspring of magical energy that was, it seems to have run quite dry. This is just a likeness, and not some sort of. Okay. No, no, no. This is not Gro literally all goose. This is a statue made of pure Wait. gold. Groost. Groost's mind palace. The doors are opening. The windows are opening. Groost sees the light now. So your power came from all goose. Right? We're on the same page there, right? We have, we have to be. Those were the um, words I just spoke to you, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, right? Um, so all the power came from all goose, And you're the betrayer of all goose. So Wait, they want to get you. I'm. And... What? Well, oh. okay. So how how oh. how do you lose your power from like a deity, right? You either don't go along with what the deity did, or you piss them off in some really big way. So how would you piss off our goose? Probably by betraying our goose. Like if I betrayed our goose, our goose would probably be pretty pissed at me. That's why I would tell him first. So I wasn't a betrayal. Anyway, um. Um, so you persuade Orgush, which means that to summon Orgush, they need to kill you and get your blood, because that's the blood of a betrayer, so they can summon Orgush, which is pretty bad. Um, Wait, where is this all coming from? Um, I, I pull out the, the folio that I got from the Blood Witch, and, um, and she, she called you the betrayer, right? Roost, is that right? Well, uh, the betrayer, was, yes, something like that. Yes. So. She called you. The, sorry, uh, Olive's like, because she's pulled out her spell book and is like pulling out like like little scraps of paper that she wrote notes on. Like, no, nope, that's not it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the blood witch was um, less of someone trying to create these fancy animals, uh, and more of a interconnected player in something, then. Um, she could have been making these to come to kill you. Yeah, she well, definitely wanted I, me dead for some reason. She, she wanted your, your dreams, I think, right? Because she sensed that thing here, the, um, what is it called? Onies. Oh, the Oni. She sent the Oni here, so why would she send it here? Not for me. I haven't got any interesting dreams. Um, uh, so it must have been for you. So you must have had dreams for some purpose. I don't know what they were. Presumably like some big old summoning juice. Um, or I wanted to bring you yourself. So she clearly she, you know, it wasn't just passing Evility. Cream, hmm. treachery, and betrayal to complete ritual. Interesting. I'm sure my blood is worth quite a bit to quite a few creatures out there. Um, well. Betrayer who is an affront to Urgush. Um, 
those are pieces I'm getting. I'm also getting um, a very long, great line of wisdom where it's um, not betrayal if you tell someone about it. But I think yes. that was more of a conversation that we had, not something that's in a book. So let's we can just skip over that. Right. I was um, going to say I'm pretty sure it's still betrayal. No, I don't what think. I said. No, I don't think so. If I t if I say to you, Sylvia, I'm going to walk out of this house and I'm going to set fire to the house. That's not betrayal. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. Y yes, but the it act of be... setting the house on fire uh, is in fact betrayal. No, it, it's the opposite. If if I were to say, Shavia, we are the best of friends, I would never burn down your house. And then I burn down a house, that is betrayal. Yes, and also telling her first and then burning down the house is also still betrayal. No. Both of them As are betrayal. Assuming I start with the assumption that you didn't originally want to burn down my house, that sudden shift is the betrayal. No, that's just learning a greater understanding of my desire to burn down the house. All right. Through um, betrayal. <laughs> so here's here's the thing. Shavia, is it possible that in your trying to or in, in your devotion to Orgush or your pledging to Orgush, however you want to frame it, I'm not going to put emotional ties around it for you that you realized you went too far and tried to undo what you did doesn't sound like it so there is the you know the oh. alternative that maybe you were working with Orgush and you were like wow I could have unlimited power I will betray Orgush and drain his blood and turn into mega Orgush you know that that's also possible too um, who, who doesn't want so five heads yeah. I, I don't I don't want five heads. Also doesn't quite sound like me. Um it's a very messy way to get ahead what when there's not a What the what sounds like you? Don't really know. Manipulating people for another end? Exactly. Okay, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Gruus, keep this in mind. By your logic, she's told us so now it's not betrayal. Sahara? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chris. <laughs> Do you... Would you happen to be able to name these other patrons you courted whilst in service to this one? Um, I did that record... in itself might be considered... I, I, I did record their names uh, in a book in my library, which is empty at the moment. It was hard to keep track after a while. <clears throat> certainly. Oh, so there are many. Dozens, yes. <clears throat> well, certainly one of them might be considered quite an affront to the golden god that you've created. <laughs> well, Perhaps, yes. Although, why wouldn't he have just taken that out on me? Uh, by removing your memory and making you suffer through realization, that might exactly be that. Does this look like the kind of creature that would penalize someone with emotional trauma? I, well, I'm I just think, looking I think at it, would... I'm getting traumatized, yes. I think he might just eat her with his five heads. <clears throat> yes, I mean... Oh. And yeah. be very upset that there wasn't more of me to go around. I mean, from what I've seen, I would barely make a snack for one of them. If it is unlikely that you would betray the creature by willful usurp power, etc., and it's unlikely that the creature would react in this fashion to your, um, as you say, how you angle your next patrons, uh, etc., then what does that leave us with? How, indeed, could you be considered a betrayer? Uh, not knowing this creature, where does this creature reside? Is it here physically somewhere? Oh, yes. It's, it's um, by no means a, a deity, like you think. Just a strongly magical presence very physically on this world um i don't know where ogush is now 
Kush used to reside in the temple. Um, I haven't returned back there since this uh, not being able to remember as uh, well Goose was not known for um, an even temper so no, best probably five heads to, uh, uh, to sort all of this out um, did you manage to recover anything else from the um, from the tomb robbers Anything else that could give us a clue? I mean, they were uh, coming from this location, from Gush's temple. I pull out the map and take it out. I don't think we did the whole like reset thing, but take out the map to, and watching it closely to see what it does. Yeah, um, it's largely in the same condition. The things have progressed a little a bit of the way to the center of the map, but she looks down at. Oh. Well, that's interesting. That's exactly what I said. What do you find interesting about it? Uh, the sigil. Why? What do you find interesting about it? That the ink moved. I guess that's to be expected. Um, no, the, the sigil. Are you familiar with this? Is Olive familiar with this? Make an Arcana check. Okay. Twenty-five. It is the sigil of unbinding. Yeah, it's the sigil of unbinding. Yeah, I knew that. No, hmm. I did know that. I know that. Why am I guessing myself? You're making me really nervous. I knew this. Of course you did. Um, Sigil of Unbinding, centered on the Temple of Orgush, uh, unbinding things, as we know from use of the sigil, and the incantations, unbinds the elements to the extremities of the sigil, those which you could capture them with further sigils or other parts of an incantation, so it's sort of center that... Um, spreads out like a crack or a fissure in ice there. There's no other symbols here, so we can simply assume that whatever this is unbinds these locations, which would explain why the locations are trying to seep back together into the center. So um, this map tells me is that something or someone has unbound Orgush um, for uh, what looks to be a... Um, limited amount of time uh but quite successfully um as these uh even markings that denote this seem to be trying to find their way back that's the thing with these powerful beings they uh don't tend to like being you know dispersed uh who or what could do this i don't know but uh, i think I think it's clear why my power has stopped. Um, Orgush is in five pieces. Well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. How would those pieces manifest in the physical world? Wagons? Um, not entirely sure. Uh, maybe like this, but one at a time? I don't know. A one-headed hydro? No, it's a lizard. Um... <laughs> a big old lizard. It's just a bunch of little geckos. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly just crawling. Look, five lions form Voltron. I get it. But, um... Um... <sighs> and you're, you're sure you didn't undo this? No. Why would they do this? I mean, I don't know. I'm not really sure of anything. That's why I hired all of you. <clears throat> Here's my other question. We've been in here how long? In this room? Yeah. I don't know. Um, going on 10 minutes, maybe? Oh, okay. 
Is there a reason why you asked Caspian to keep on being busy for 15 minutes? So we're going to talk probably for 15 minutes? Yeah. I perhaps erroneously assumed this conversation would be limited to that time span, but you can't just have them wandering in here asking all sorts of questions. I mean, Caspian struggles enough figuring out which way the door opens at the front of the estate. Yeah, he brought Undine like twigs like it was a bouquet of roses last night. It was real weird. It was a little yeah. awkward. I'm glad they're getting along. So, more questions. Did I? Did we bring this? Did we bring up? I feel like we didn't. But, um, so, why would you need to create a person? Because you know, the the Jin person, um said that he, they helped you to create a person who would have no soul. Um, and I think that person is on Dean. Casp oh, yes. Wait, you think I somehow created on Dean? Correct. Well, that's just ridiculous. The Jin gave you the ability, and when I asked on Dean about her life before serving you, she was incredibly vague in the sense that she didn't really know. Um, and also, you know, when I told her that, um, that I, she can be my friend, she didn't get all emotional and two eyes like everybody else does. Watch. Could... Olive, you can be my friend. Thanks, dude. See? <laughs> um, well, I see some problems with all of this. First off, um, to the best of my knowledge, Jin can't actually create life, so it's already flawed uh, from the beginning. Um, so I can't see that really working. And second off, I found Undine as a child and brought her here because I didn't know what else to do with her. I couldn't just leave her off in some dungeon. Oh. Hmm. How do you know that you... Okay, so here is the, here is the thing, right? We looked in that book of yours, and there was a spell called Modify Memory. So when memories can be modified, how can we trust people's memories to mean anything? Well, regardless if a memory is accurate or not, the memory that's been put there would certainly mean something. Yes, it does mean something. It would mean that you or somebody else didn't want you to know that Ondine was created for a purpose. Is there a way to tell us somebody has a soul? I, I mean, I suppose you could kill them and see where it goes. I, no, that I don't think that's a good idea. I tried asking, but... That also led to nothing. Um, Most people aren't able to accurately answer um, questions describing the metaphysical uh, otherness of forms that they may have. I know, it's, it's troubling. Um, so, I then have to wonder. She, sit, she like sits down on the base of the statue and just sort of like kicks her feet through the gold a little bit. <laughs> Any gold that goes grisway, he would pick up and pocket. Um, um, so, okay, so, let's imagine that Ondine had been created, though. Why would somebody want to create a person, even if they have no soul? Perhaps I could think of an infinite amount of reasons why having more okay. people would be so. Second, follow-on question. So, you know how you have a lake of souls. Uh, and lake, yes, it's not really. And just go on. I don't mean to interrupt your thought process. Continue. So we have a soulless person, and a lake of souls. It just sort of strikes me as two very big coincidences. 
but I'm just one small goblin, so maybe everything looks big. Well, there's certainly lots of room for conjecture. I do love conjecture. Um, anyway, I just wanted to ask, in case maybe you would tell us anything, like, oh, I'm trying to create a giant, um, soul person. Um, but no, you did not. So I can get nothing more from this. Happy to be of help. Thank you. So, since you do not get your power from Orgush anymore, um, does that mean that this gold could, you know, come towards us? I, I mean, are you asking me for more money? Well, I feel like the stakes have been raised. I mean, I did hand you, uh, upon leaving, a bag of, what, 500 gold? What? Oh. Oh. There was no... <laughs> you yeah. want that. <laughs> there was oh. no... <laughs> I mean, what do you... Take a handful if you want. I don't see how it's going to help us. Well, I'm just... I'm trying to gauge your, you know, attachments to gold as... As a... This is all a means to an end, which seems to have already ended. Um, okay. But... Just be aware that, um, I mean, maybe Orgush is watching you right now, and if you disturb the offering, uh... Please don't pay us Bruce starts stash. stomping in the gold. Gah! Ah. So... No Orgush? Okay. Um... I did look in your book, and I'm very sorry. I'm not. I'm very, I'm very... No, I am. I'm not. Oh, you're not. Okay. Um, you're not okay. Is there a reason why... So we met someone when we first came here in Colonel Bent and Carol. Did a little gnome and looking for my friend. <laughs> um, is she the same person mentioned in your book? It is the same, yes. Have you reached out to her about gathering your memories again? No, she wants nothing to do with me. Why? It's personal and complicated. Most things personal are pretty complicated. Mm. Fair enough. She off limits. Hey, hey, Sean, did I date your ex? Um, she's. No, oh, what you're saying is she's available. <laughs> so you're saying is I got a chance. <laughs> I think you'll find uh, <laughs> her quite, <laughs> quite obstinate um, when it comes to having her mind changed. Do you say this anyway? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I mean, if you'd like to go talk to her. Um, I wouldn't lead with my name. <clears throat> That's fair. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry if I brought up a sensitive topic. Well... Well, being thorough, I suppose I pay you for that. Um, I could show you the library, but there's nothing in it. I have another question yeah. relating to the creature. This creature? 
Well, yes, the five pieces that are drawing back together. Oh, yes. Where is it drawing back together at? Um, Back to the temple? Is that the epicenter? It does appear that way. (laughs) What (coughs) happened? What do you suppose happens when it reforms? My guest will be very angry. And so any in its path would pay that price. Because as you said, this is not a creature of cunning or emotional. Um, um, Grouge is not unintelligent, but is... Passionate. Passionate, yes. Um, my guess is they would first target whatever or whomever unbound it. The Blood Witch's folio, did we ever figure out what exactly was in it? Fiend. Um, it's a fiend fiends? folio. Fiend Never mind, folio. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, Watsy? 2019? <laughs> See, uh, t- 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 If we were to go to the temple, we may be able to track each piece as well as put together evidence of who was there and which way they went. I think Beyond temple just... is our next step. Yeah. Yeah. It, in the, fo- the folio, what I was saying before it had a lot of language about the betrayer. Um, Map and... five points drawn to an intersecting point. Sorry. Go ahead. I was, had... tra- I was just... Yes. Is that it? It had a, it had a ritual. Sorry, it had a ritual written. It had a ritual, a ritual written in it too, didn't it? I believe. Anyway, go on, Sarah. I was just curious about whether um, it was obvious from the text of it if the Blood Witch herself was a worshipper of Ogrush. Also, how do you spell that? Ogrush. Yeah. T H A T. <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> also not helpful. <laughs> and Chris has two years. <coughs> it's not my fault. It says here it's it's Bethany. So it's has two fault. years as well. <laughs> Bethany. Buthuni. <laughs> what? Buthuni. Buthuni are. Okay, so. Conjecture aside, the temple. It's the only place where we can maybe discover where the uh, ritual used to undo Grush might have been likely any kind of ritualistic or or uh, evidence would be com- just bypassed by the burglars who are only after material gain plus they probably won't go back there because they think it's it's you know been picked clean hmm. so How did we all that transpired by the way badly um i set a wheel of the cart on fire and the cart went down the river and they went after it um, excessive, gonna... but I suppose that works. Well, I you know... stole your book and dived into the water. Yeah, we were trying to sweet talk him. I, I can't imagine that's... how that failed. <laughs> this is not exactly good at all. <laughs> I'm not it's the cool. face. I'm not the face, and I am anyway. Yes, um... he's clearly the face as she gestures towards Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Katar didn't make things easy, so. Um, anyway. Well, um, it's all right to make enemies. Um, I'll, uh, have my security chief, uh, double his efforts. Make um, enemies? Two times zero is still zero. Um, no. I kid. Ugh. Do you? No, I don't. Um. I know you said your library is empty, but do you mind if I take a look? I suppose. 
um, she meanders over. Um, you go back to the map. Um, and uh, she reaches out into the ether and accesses the dynamic lighting mode. And uh, it's a nice I heard that's in beta. <laughs> the uh, doors uh, to it open. Uh, I think you can see, right? Mm -hmm. Am I okay to move? Yeah. Okay. After you move in. Well, I, I, I realized I halfway through I should have asked. Um, during this, I'm gonna, I would like to use my um, Order of the Scribes um, ability to cast a ritual um, as it, with normal casting time. So an action, I think, to cast Detect Magic. Um, upon, upon entering, you do see that all the shelves are filled with books, and the room is sort of warmly lit with <laughs> many candelabras, um, all sorts of uh, differing seating arrangements from uh, chaise lounges to couches. There's a small table and desk. Um, other various uh, things. There's a collect collection of um, look to be. Sort oh my of God! Of round Earth theory. What in the empty, world is that? <laughs> empty uh, sort of mugs <laughs> and such that look like their uh, contents have long since dried at the bottom. As if <laughs> many a many a piece of uh, drinkware has migrated its way into here to never return to the scullery. Um, I want to make this campaign accessible to Dora, so. <laughs> no, all of the all of the glasses end up back in the kitchen. They just all have a fourth of an inch of liquid at the bottom. Um, um efficient. Uh, uh, I thought you said it was empty in here. It is. I go and I grab a book off the shelf. Your hand goes through the book. Oh. Oh. I mean, why would I want to sit here and stare at empty shelves? So it's all of the books are an illusion? It's really sad. I agree. That's why I hired somebody to fix it. Am I picking up anything else in the room? A whole lot of illusion beep, magic. Beep, beep, beep. Mm. <clears throat> it is pretty. If this is what it looked like. I mean, this is what it looks like. Well, I mean, you made an illusion. Is this what it looked like before? I mean, that's what it looks like now. Right. Right. What do you do when you're in here? Read. There's no books. <clears throat> well, I, I, I could read if there were books. Yeah. So again, what do you do when you're in here? Read. Now. I don't spend now. a lot of time in here because there's no books to read. Oh, okay. Well, then that makes sense. I was looking for some sort of logic. Anything else? Um, I want him to just scan the room to see if anything else odd just pops out to me whether it be detect magic or just logical placement of, of items or things. Uh, make a perception roll. Okay. 17. There is a door to the north of the room. Oh. Um, but beyond that, there's not a... Um, nothing strikes you as weird. I mean, it is... A room filled with empty shelves and illusory books, but beyond that, oh. it's pretty normal. What's through there? Uh, 
more of a quiet reading nook. Have we shared too much today? Or you shared too much today? I've shared quite a bit. Right. Are you feeling at your limits or can I go in there? I mean, there's no empty shelves with no books. So I can go in that door? you would like if you don't trust me at my word I, I'm a curious person it's not trust I like to see things it's definitely not trust <laughs> <laughs> also yeah. I'm going to move into the room just a reading nook what else anything in there uh, looking around there is a how did you get in there because um, your dynamic uh, re <laughs> Is, oh, uh, I couldn't see it before. Sorry, it was like all black to me, so that's why I was being weird about it. Oh. Um, you said a door, a door to the north, and it literally was like I yeah, couldn't yeah. see beyond it. Um, we were able to move there. Because because the square is the low end of the wall. You see how it's there? Oh yeah. yeah. And you put the the boundary just past that, so it let us enter that square without oh. the lighting to happen. It might be like a quarter of a millimeter, but it's yeah. still it's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, a single sort of more comfortable chair there, um, another candelabra, and a smaller bookshelf, but a bookshelf nonetheless, uh, sitting there, uh, and you still have Detect Magic up, right? How I to do, create yeah. Audine, what in the world? Uh, the books here are not illusory. Um, scanning, do I see any titles? Nope. Do you mind if I take a look at one? Do you have a purse we can go through? <laughs> you can just let us in your bedroom. I'm not <laughs> seeing how all of this is particularly relevant. Well, Groove's understanding of relevance is that um, previously in your life, you were a bit of a, you know, questionably intentioned human being. What do you mean previously? Or, uh, in a worse way, because at one point, you and Big Big Man or Goose were, you know, on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. Or a more same page than you are now. I'd like to think I was always at least one page ahead of him. <laughs> right, but everybody thinks they're one page ahead. There's always somebody that's one page ahead of them. That's Until you I get to the last page. Oh, and <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, Ghost is always found that by doing things that no sane person would expect, nobody can be one page ahead of you. Mm. Unless they expect that you're going to do that. Right. But if even you don't expect yourself to do that, then they can't where is expect this conversation to going? Where is <laughs> Who knows? That's why you can't be one step ahead. <laughs> um, my point is that um, she reaches well, over and picks up a half full bottle of wine um, on on the uh, table next to her. Gross blocks. One step um, ahead. Uh, so, if we find wheel books in here, maybe the books can give us some kind of clue as to what you were doing before your brain got scrambled. Oh, I know in the contents of the books, I can assure you that they do not. Okay. If you'd like to rifle through all of them, then perhaps I leave you here to do that um, so I can do other cool. things. But of course, doesn't like me. Um, the other two, Undine um, and Cassian not find their way in here for obvious reasons. And you're definitely not to go through the door at the south room of the large chamber. It's very dangerous. But in there. It's very dangerous. You want to go through there. But, but what's in there? <laughs> um, I'm 
other parts of my work. Very dangerous parts. Okay, but, but which parts of your work? Parts that you don't need to see that are very dangerous. But and... what if we could hear about them and not see them? I don't need to disclose every last bit of my life to you. No, but you should. <laughs> All right, then. Um, she walks out and sort of, like, grabs you by the ear um, and <laughs> pull, pulls you down to um, uh, to the door to the south. If you're so very curious, then go take a look for yourself. And she opens the door, pushes you in, and then closes the door behind you. Okay, what's in there? Um, it is... I, I... It is pitch black in there. Okay. Oh, oh kill the goblet! Oh god! What is, what's happening? Bruce would like to light a torch. Alright, you light a torch um, there, and uh, feels like it's lit, but there is no light that illuminates. As if this area is darkened by some sort of magical means. Okay. Bruce okay. would oh, like yeah. to cast Detect Magic. All right. Dark to see. <laughs> uh, you are able to cast detect magic, um, and you see very quickly that the area that you are in is uh, subject to a darkness spell. Okay. Um, I'm gonna click this in chat so I can. So, if you can see, okay. So here's the question. <clears throat> Would detect magic work if you're blind? Or do you need to be able duration, to actively sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you? Sense the presence does not imply sight. Okay, great. So that means that if there is something that magic around me... second sentence uses the word see. Uh, if you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint or around an invisible creature or object. So sensing magic... Area. Require it isn't required sight, but seeing then lets you in on the rest of the spell. Correct. So you cannot I see, would... but the spell can be active. Right. Yeah. So I can sense magic, right? Yes. You sense the darkness spell. Okay. Gruus is going to listen really carefully. Make a perception. Perception, common and hot. Okay. Uh, you hear a very m muted and muffled uh, from the other side of the door. He's only going to learn his lesson this way, I suppose. Yes, but we, our body count's a little high right now. <laughs> What? And we'd rather, Wait, what? <laughs> rather not add the goblin to it. Bruce will reach into his into his bag and gently pet Eloise to keep himself uh, calm. Um, and with his hand on the wall, inch around. All right. Um, reaching out, you do feel walls sort of um, not like you're in a small, tiny room, but you do feel sort of like walls in all directions as if there are narrow hallways uh, heading off away from you in each direction. Groost will hug the left wall. All right. Always. Uh, uh, so the hallway you're in is you can sort of reach out on both sides and, and touch the walls very narrow. Um, and you take a few steps and there's uh, another offshoot to your right. Um, and it seems the pathway continues. And a couple steps off that, there's uh, another offshoot to the left and to the right. Um, all these same narrow hallways. Just cold, smooth stone. Okay. <clears throat> Groost at all times will have his hand on the left wall and always take the left wall so that he can turn around and touch the right wall and touch that going back. <coughs> Alright, you uh, continue off uh, feeling your way around and very quickly start to get uh, disoriented um, in that you don't know which direction you're facing in 
the original as it seems like you've entered some sort of maze um, and it just continues on um, dark narrow passages multiple okay. ways you can go um, as soon as I get the falling. impression that it's it's a maze Groost would turn back All right. and would hand on the same wall as before um, turning so it's on his right would hog it back until he gets right. back to the door. You confidently walk your way back and walk into a wall. Okay. Uh, on the on the outside, I'm just like, look, I get I get the point that you're trying to make can, here. Can I can I hear this? But it would be great no, if you have the goblin sure. back. Sure. I'm just I, curious. I do. I'm very sympathetic. However. I would really appreciate it if we could have the goblin back, please. I mean... I'm... Don't worry, the goblin's safe. That's not the player character that's targeted I'm... normally. I'm sure it will <laughs> likely be fine. I mean, we have a cleric on standby, and if anything, I can learn a fair bit from this. Um... Right. Like, what? Well, Whether this mousetrap works? I've... <laughs> I've gone through. What is this, Steve? I've gone through quite elaborate lengths to, you know, simulate dungeon conditions to make them feel at home. I mean, what does a dungeon feel more at home like than with having an adventure in it, right? True. What? Wait, to, 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 um, to make what feel more at home? Um. Well, I, I mean. Over time, I've been in so many of these that I start to feel bad for them, and, uh, you know, I brought a few home. Um, the dungeons? Groost, as you uh, go to uh, pull away from the wall... It's you Svarts. Feel, <laughs> you, you, you feel yourself, um, your hand kind of, you bump into the wall, and then you feel that your hand is adhesed to the wall, as if it has some sort of uh, sticky property to it. And you go to pull away, and the stickiness starts to burn on your hand. That is where we are going to end for tonight. Yes! <laughs> we turn it, and it's like petrified goblin. Like <laughs> That's not what I think it is. Probably I was just is. Being, like... Very interesting. Cool. Well, um, we took some steps forward mentally today, which is good. Good. Mm -hmm. But then we backpedaled a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's the uh, as long as we're breaking even each episode, I count it as a win. Um, <laughs> Well, you certainly um, have a lot more things, and you've explored more of the house, mm -hmm. especially yeah. each step we were told not to. Um, <laughs> a lot more of the house. Honestly, I had expected you guys to try to break into this a lot sooner, um, but you know, better uh, saner minds have prevailed till this point. Casey, in 50% of all the encounters we've had, people die. <laughs> so, and by people, I mean me or somebody who's trying to commit suicide. So, uh, yeah, this is it's a I bit of a dis... Yeah, we haven't had much empty time in the house, right? Like, it's, I think we've only really spent three nights in the three house. Nights so far, yeah. yeah, so. About a night of character. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you all for playing. Um, this was good. We will move forward to see what uh, uh, what is happening uh, as it appears that the convergence or goosh is approaching. Or goosh. Cool. Gush. 
thank you to Roll20.net for having us as part of the Spotlight program. Thanks to Kevin McLeod for our lovely uh, soundscapes that fill our ear holes. Um, we had Dark Times, Cryptic Sorrow, Cambodian Odyssey, Dark Walk, uh, Sneaky Snitch. Well, let's let's put Sneaky Snitch on again. Um, this was a great choice, Amon. Uh, you get 84, uh, 84 roll it slant points. Um, we also had, <coughs> bless you, uh, Return of Lazarus. Um, I think that was it. Good times. Uh, if you want to check out how we got to this point and see more characters die than you probably have in your total D and D careers, um, you can go back and watch previous episodes uh, on our YouTube channel, which you can find by searching for Roll It Slant on the YouTube search feature, um, or making a hundred accounts and subscribing them all, and then there'll be a URL we can give you. I'm not sure if you can actually do that, so don't um, don't make us in trouble. Uh, or you can follow us on Twitter, uh, at Roll It Slant, for all of our intense content that we generate two or three times a day um, that enriches the lives of our viewers. Or you can check out our Grinder page, um, where uh, we link to our OnlyFans. Theo is getting down on some business with Cadaverous. Yeah, uh, this week's feature is uh, Theo and Cadaverous. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called um, If These Old Bones Could Sing. Um, good night. Tio shows you what being a ram really means. Yeah. No.